welcome back everybody happy new year happy new year indeed merry christmas in a minute yeah we haven't i was just talking to marvin about this earlier we haven't done an episode probably since after thanksgiving i think was the last episode right yeah something like that sickness and tarkov no it's sickness (laughs) and the holidays i'm still a little sick you could probably hear it in my voice and see it in my fucking eyes I'm still still getting over my sickness, but we're back. Yeah. Back from Marvin's sickness, my sickness, your fucking counter-terrorist operation that you were up to, mm. or whatever yeah. the fuck. <laughs> Traveling. International man of mystery over here. Back home, finally. Yeah. I can't believe it's 2024. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, 2023 boy. was wild. But we are back, and better than ever. And we got a good one today, mm-hmm. boy. I've been waiting to talk about this fucking movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Rebel Moon today, folks. Part one, A Child of Fire. Uh, for mm, this, Whatever that fucking means. I don't know. For this episode <laughs> 75, uh, stick around, take a listen to that. And uh, if this is your first time here and you like what you're listening to by the end of it, Maybe consider subscribing. Who knows? What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. So, uh, how was everybody's holiday season? Good? Besides the fact that I was sick on Christmas, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fortunate. I have not been sick really at all since uh, like pre-COVID. Like I had a chest congestion, I think pre-COVID, but like COVID rolled out and I have not gotten sick at all. So I've been fortunate. Weren't you just recently sick? Like over the summer, I feel like, or in like early October uh, or something? My allergies, my allergies fuck up sometimes in the spring, a little bit in the fall sometimes, you know, I'm mm. a smoker and stuff. So I, I'll get, I'll get a little congestion, but I have not had, like, a deep chest cold. Sometimes I'll get one every other year or so, like a deep chest cold, but I have not yeah. had one since COVID, so I'm I'm lucky. Nice. Yeah. Marvin got hit with the vid, right, Marvin? Yep. That's what the stick said, at least. They gave you know. the virus. <laughs> they gave me the virus. Go get yourself In the a gym. booster. You beat it, though. I did beat it. It was quick. Three days. <laughs> yeah. Quick turnaround. In and out. Yeah. Thanks to the vax. Yeah. That's right. Thanks. Shouts out. Thanks, science. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> got sick on Christmas Day. Strangely enough, exactly as I did last year. I don't know if you guys remember. I think something goes on with me that like coincides with Tarkov wipe because every time that game fucking wipes, <laughs> I get fucking sick. But it happened. Sick of the bullshit. Right. Yeah. No, dude, last year, well, same exact thing happened. Yeah. Christmas Day rolled around. Sorry, I look like fucking one of the Who's from Whoville now. Christmas Day fucking rolled around. <laughs> And I got sick. Last year, I didn't, I was a little bit depressed because of my dog. So I didn't go with like the family for Christmas. I just kind of like, out to Emma. yep, shout out. I just kind of stayed home and like progressively start to felt, feel worse throughout the course of Christmas day. And then I was just sick for like two, two and a half, three weeks. And like the same fucking thing happened this year. I just Christmas Day came. I don't know. Maybe it was like a self fulfilling prophecy or something because I was thinking about it. But sure, shit, got sick on Christmas Day again, and I've been sick since. Very congested. Yeah, there's still. definitely a little mind some stuff stuff to it. But also cold weather, seasonal, and then you know, yeah, yeah. You, the game wipe comes out and you start gaming a little more than you're staying up too late and you're you no, know, it was like a day before. As good as you should be. It just, I think it all adds up a little bit. I think my immune system is like zero. I think because uh, I like basically don't go anywhere since like COVID. Not because of COVID, just because like that's just life now. I like you know hang out mm. with my friends here and there, but like I don't get like a ton of exposure to all like the different fucking viruses out there. Yeah. But we have like a lot of people come over for Christmas Eve, and I think that's when my body just can't handle it. It's like the fucking perfect storm of illnesses hitting my immune system and it just shuts down. Like by the next day, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm feeling better though. I, something else is going on with me. My fucking allergies, talking about allergies. I've had like, 
for the better part of like a month, month and a half, I have been just like very congested. Uh, something's going on. Got to figure it out. It's not good. Yeah. Sinuses. Get well. I mean, allergies aren't really active right now. It's really just this, your sinuses, which well, is similar, but. It's an indoor allergy thing, obviously. I think I'm allergic to like, oh. you know, dust or some shit. Yeah. Rip. But it's been pretty bad. Anyhow, I'm feeling better. Marvin's good. good. You're back. We're back. Yep. Yeah. Um, We're back. Yeah, so holidays were okay, I guess, for me. You guys been watching anything interesting these past couple of weeks? Mm. Anything new? Anything fun? Uh, <coughs> yeah, actually, uh, did you have you guys watched Werewolf by Night in Color yet? No, I didn't oh, even realize it was no. out in color. I, about I sat that. down and watched it because my friend uh, hadn't watched it, and mm -hmm. I was like, I've seen the black and white. I want to see the color. I want to see the difference. Um, it's better in black and white. Oh, I yeah. thought it was better, but it was still good in color. Um, there's some things you see and you pick up that you really wouldn't pick up when it was in black and white, I guess, because right. of the color, but uh, still good. Uh, just not as good, but definitely, um, I would say, maybe check it out if you haven't seen it. Um uh, Saltburn, have you guys watched that yet? No, I heard, I a heard bunch about of people that. talking about it. Yeah, everybody's talking about it. There's a couple scenes in there that are wild. Um, Is it just because Barry Keegan's fucking like naked in it or something? No. Oh, it, right. uh, <laughs> I thought that's so what basically, I heard. like he's a uh, he he goes this po he he meets up he hooks up with this popular kid and goes to his house. Right. Like he's a scholarship kid to Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. And hooks up with this popular kid and probably like, yeah, come hang out with me. And it turns out this popular kid does this shit all the time, every year or whatever. Um, but he's like obsessed with him. And there's some just like weird ass scenes. And I knew these scenes were coming up. I was like, okay, I know exactly what's going to happen here. So I'm not going to watch this scene. I'm going to watch uh, my friend watch this scene and see her reaction. <laughs> okay. Like, there's a couple of scenes in there that you're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and that was um, Emerald Fennel, Barry Keegan. That's a good one. Um, and then Monarch, great show so far. I think probably the best in the MonsterVerse so far. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I have to start that. I got a couple of shows I just recently threw on my list. I got to fucking get to. That's one of them for sure. Um, Reacher, Reacher's out. Keeping I've, up with that. I have been watching Reacher. That's good. I don't know if it's yeah, as good yeah. as season one, but it's definitely good. I'm enjoying it. It's yeah. different. It's different than season one. Um, yep. But yeah, that's been good. Apparently, there's like a huge like fan outcry for him to be Batman in the DCU. Uh, I don't know why. I think for some reason, Frank Miller's Batman just uh, fucks everybody up. Everybody's got Frank Miller's Batman in their head, so they just picture, like, the huge hulking Batman, which I guess he would be <laughs> yeah, great for, but... A tree trunk, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if... I don't know if he'd be the best Batman, but, uh, yeah. So that show's been good. Um, I'm also watching Fargo. The new season of Fargo is awesome. Right. Very, very good. <laughs> What? My roommate started watching that. He's like, you, you watch Fargo? I'm like, yeah, I haven't caught up with the new stuff yet. And he was confused by what I said, like, because they released season five and he didn't know. So he, like, watched season five and now he's going back to season one oh. to oh, watch the old stuff. Well, that's actually what's cool about the show is, you know, it's just obviously a it, Yeah, anthology. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't really matter. It's just the tone of the show is the same. Yeah. And of course, the tone of the show. A lot show. of good actors in that show, though. Yeah, it's been really good. I've been enjoying this season quite a bit. What's her name from uh, Ted Lasso's in it? The chick who played Keely in Ted Lasso? Yeah. I don't remember her name. Mm -hmm. um, I do not either off the top of my head, but yeah. Yeah, she's really good in this. Um, oh, man, what's her name? It's gonna, oh, Juno Temple, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right, Juno. She's the star of this season, and... Uh, She's been doing a pretty good good job, and what's his name is in it as well. Um, oh God, I'm fucking having a problem with names. Who's the guy who played uh, uh, Fletch in the in the new movie? Oh, John Ham. John Ham, yeah, he plays like the villain in it, and he's also pretty right. good. How about yeah, you, Marvin? You've been watching John stuff? Hamm as a villain. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. He usually plays like a pot, like a like a fucking charming, the happy go lucky good guy. Yeah, charming good guy. This he plays like a, he plays like um he plays the mayor of like a small town out you know I think in North Dakota or whatever 
Uh, it's always the asshole mayor in the small town. Not the mayor. I'm sorry. He's the sheriff. <laughs> but he's like oh. he's like w wildly. So pop not like Jaws. No, he plays the sheriff. He's like wildly popular among the townsfolk, but he is like uh, basically like a right wing sort of like Christian nationalist type of guy. Uh, but he believes in like beating his women. Like that's, that's like, like the woman belongs to the man type of thing. That's like the crux of the yeah. story without spoiling Women anything. submit to men, men submit to God type. Yeah, 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 thing. exactly that. Yeah. But so that's been very good. How about you, Marvin? What have you been watching? Anything? Uh, not much. I've been, I watched a few episodes of um, X-Files, but that's mm. about it. <clears throat> How's that mm. been? You liking that? It's good. Yeah, it's getting real crazy. You haven't got into no new shows. You didn't watch fucking uh, the Mars show or whatever the fuck. Not the Mars show. Oh, for all mankind. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, kind of. I, I I did watch a few episodes, but the first two seasons were the best for sure, and it kind of fell off after that. Yeah, that's on so. my list, but I haven't got into it yet because it's like four seasons in. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if I'm ready for that grind. I, Definitely uh, watch the first two seasons, and then you can decide if you want to watch the rest. If you, you know, right on. Um, Dusty, are you watching uh, Echo? Yes, I've heard Echo's like pretty good. Um, two episodes in, I have not finished it because I'm watching it with my friend, uh, and we haven't had the time to watch any more episodes. But uh, yeah, so far, um, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, it's only five episodes, so we've only got like three left, but yeah, uh, for me at least. But um, two episodes in, and it is better than some of the marble stuff that they've been putting out. Way better, actually. Um, right. So yeah, that's what I've heard. I'm enjoying it. I was I was gonna awesome. kind of ignore it because I I assumed that releasing all at once it was like destined to be terrible, just because I felt like that's why they were doing it. Just really, I just fuck it, just like release it all at once. <laughs> but I don't yeah. know. I've been hearing good things, and also now I've obviously heard that like you have to watch it because you know that's marvel doing yeah. the marvel thing and well, apparently it's but yeah. a, this is their but they're they've got a new thing now they're calling it marvel spotlight which is what they're calling shows where you can sit down and watch this without having known anything because my friend has not she hasn't caught up on um all the uh yeah she she's not up to the and she's not even through the infinity saga mm. Right. And then we sat down and started watching Echo and I was like, well, you know, I sent it to Screen Crush. I'm like, here's, you know, 33 hours and 17 minutes or whatever. If you want to see what's going on before you get here, you're going to spoil some stuff for some movies you haven't seen. But the Marvel spotlight is supposed to be you can sit down and watch this, not having watched anything Marvel and still enjoy it. And it's it does feel like that, like they give you enough yeah. where you don't feel like who is this person? Who is that person? But well, I did kind of have to explain a couple things to her. Like, you know, she got really confused in the first episode. I think, spoiler, like, they do her backstory. Yeah. And then they basically do the last episode of Hawkeye, where she shoots him in the fucking face. And she was like, what the fuck just happened? I'm so confused right now. I'm like, okay. They did her a backstory, and then they showed what happened in Hawkeye, and now we're at present. So everything you just saw, why it might have been confusing, right. was just to catch everybody up. Well, it's where we are. It seems like what they did with it is like you don't have to have watched previous stuff to enjoy it. Yeah. But you will have to have watched it to at least somewhat go into Daredevil. From what I've und I've tried to avoid spoilers for it. I know Daredevil's in it, but from what I understand, mm -hmm. from what I understand, did you not know Daredevil's in it? Did I just fuck it up for you? <laughs> No, I no 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 no. Oh, okay. His 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 introduction is in episode two, and it's fucking amazing. That's what I've heard, but I've also people have been. I've seen people say like, "Born Again" is going to be like directly led into by this show. So that makes sense. Also, well, maybe it's in your news, so we'll wait to talk about it. Do you have any Daredevil <laughs> news to talk about? Uh, no, I don't think I do. Actually. So I'll just bring so it up br briefly. They just recently announced that they did actually cast the Karen and Foggy characters, the same people from the Netflix series. Uh, oh, really? Because they originally weren't going to be in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Marvel firing the fucking writers who were working on it 
are finally listening to like what fans want and yeah. What's her John fucking name? She talked about it. Like, uh, <coughs> whoever played Karen Page. Yeah. Um, yeah she yeah. was like, I don't think uh, Deborah Ann Wool. She yeah. was like, I, I don't know. They haven't called me. I don't fucking know. Right. She, apparently, she was just acting, pretending. <laughs> no, no, no. They just announced it. I think it's a, I think it's like a, a recent Well, them announcing decision. it and her knowing whether or not she's going to well, be in it for are two different things. For sure. But it's I think like it's playing it off. I think it's a recent decision. I don't think they were going to go in that Maybe. direction. Maybe. Yeah. I think they originally intended to just like cut ties completely with the Netflix stuff. And that recently changed. Also, John Bernthal's been talking about the Punisher and he's like, listen, he's like, if and when he Sorry. returns, he's like, uh, you know, I, what did he say? I have the quote right here because I sent it to Ed. Shout out to Ed. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, what did he say? He said, quote, uh, the Punisher has to be right with real sacred integrity to the source material and to what is at the core of Frank. I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure that if and when we do it, we do it right. Well, Echo is the first R-rated show to hit besides um, bringing, what, um, <coughs> holy <coughs> shit, not Daredevil. Who's the other fuck? Um, <coughs> what? Deadpool. Deadpool, yeah. The Deadpool movie was the first R-rated movie that Disney put on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. But Echo is like the first show besides, I mean, what? No, yeah. Mar no the Werewolf by Night was PG-13 because it was black and white. And even, yeah. even the color version, even though it has blood, is still PG-13, which surprised me a little I bit. I mean, it wasn't really it's that. In color. It wasn't that crazy to uh, begin well, with. Well, when you, when you see it in color, there's some things you're like, really? oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right. there's some blood spurts and shit. You're like, fuck. That's fair. But it's not, you know, it's just like blood spurts and stuff. It's really not, I don't know. So they get a weight around it internationally. Maybe domestic, they don't give a fuck. But, well, I think that's uh, yeah. what it was. It was um, like the Echo China being rated thing. R. I'm excited. I like. I want Marvel to bring me more rated R TV shows like that. Like the stuff Netflix did was amazing because it was rated R. Because it was adult oriented. Because adults wanted to see that stuff. They wanted to see the gritty, dark shit. Yeah. Bring me that shit. That's what I want. I don't want PG-13 all the way around so everybody can fucking see it. I don't give a fuck about the kids. Fuck, well, kids. fuck them kids. <laughs> what I think is an issue is when they do it <laughs> to where it's like, I don't know, where they like make a thing of it. Like, this is going to be PG-13 or this yeah. is going to be rated. R. Just like make the thing and then whatever it ends up being, that's just yeah, it's it limiting. Is. Yeah. Doesn't seem natural to me. Um, right. I, I think there's some stories that need to be like, we can't tell this story properly unless it's rated R. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go in and tell a rated R story. Of course. Like I get that like blade um, or Deadpool or, I mean, even echo the way they're telling it is pretty good. And I hope they continue that. Um, and then I'm okay with diversifying, tell some PG 13 shows so that everybody can watch some shows like the, uh, what's the, the iron heart uh, story. I don't know if they're still going to, do that one or if they've shelved it around. I haven't looked at I think at they are, on unfortunately. That, but, so, I mean, I'm, but I'm okay with some PG-13 stuff, but I definitely need a little R-rated comic stories in my life if we're going to live action it. Well, so you just mentioned Blade. I think they could get away with, like, a PG-13 Blade, depending on what they want. Purely because, like, you know, it's like a lot of the violence is done to just, like, made-up fucking things. They're vampires, right? And right. they just like dissolve well, he, into like ash or whatever. Up. No, I, mean, I understand. Yeah. No, no, I understand. I'm just saying. I think they could get. They they could push just like Vampire they by could. Night. I mean, I um, would not enjoy it. Werewolf by Night. I think they could like push the limits of what PG-13 allows for. Punisher, however, absolutely, you cannot tell that. You can't tell that story, not in rated R, just because violence is like, and it's not because it's cool and it's like white fucking rage or whatever the fuck people talked about when the first when that season came out <laughs> yeah people were like oh it's just about white male violence let's shut the fuck up no okay. violence is at like the core of who he is and that's what makes him interesting not because it's violent but it's uh, it's the psychology like he's a sick individual clearly that's what's he that's the character so you can't do that in i don't think anything under the rated r so i'm glad anyhow that they're like comfort they're getting comfortable with like pushing the limits yeah. But uh so Marvin, you how far are you in X Files? Uh almost done with the first season. So okay. like twenty two, twenty three. I think there's like twenty six or something. You're going kind of slow. Do you not yeah. like it? 
No, I do. I just got other shit going on. Other shit. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's fair. Life life happens. Yeah. Did you celebrate the anniversary of uh Sopranos that just passed or is coming up? Uh yeah, I told Dusty <laughs> that I watched the one clip and now I gotta rewatch watched, the entire show. The so first thanks. TikTok. Thanks for yeah. that. Some fans are upset about that. They're like, this is the ADHD generation where you can watch the Sopranos in 25 second clips of 89 episodes. Just go watch the fucking show, please. Don't but it was like yeah, I mean, it on TikTok. It was go like watch a, the show. It was like a sizzle it's not reel the same. promo. It's just, it, it, it was not yeah. like there it was not. Well, they're like doing a, all ADX, they're doing all 86 episodes to <laughs> For the 25th anniversary, so they're gonna have yeah. 86 25 second clips of every episode. I don't yeah. know that that's like a substitution people, for the show. If people yeah. want to watch the show, they'll go watch it based, you know, if they have enough interest. Yeah, maybe then maybe that's the idea is let's release these. And if they watch enough of them, maybe they'll be like, well, this thing looks kind of good because I've actually yeah, seen like sure. I don't watch TikTok, but I've seen some YouTube shorts of some stuff. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy and what is this clip from? And then I'll go look at a show, um, and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks kind of interesting. I might watch that. So I get right. what they're trying to do, but 86 of them, that seems... Yeah, it's a little excessive. much. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair. A lot of gobble <laughs> That is a lot of gobble <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> um, so while we're on the topic of stuff we've watched recently, I thought it would be fun if uh, we did a little bit of a top three... Year in review. Year in review. Uh, the yes, top, top three movies that uh, we each watched this year that we liked, some of which might have been talked about on the podcast, some of which maybe not. A lot of confusion around the criteria there. So. There was a lot of confusion. Well, yeah, I'm the only one to follow the actual rules. I don't know that you did. Two of mine have been <laughs> talked about, but they have not been reviewed. That's fair. So, and one of them is not actually out. It's still in the theater. So. All right. Well, let's let's start mm. with you then. What is your top three? Um, well, Godzilla minus one. Um, okay. Ooh. Uh, it, they did a great job on that movie. It's amazing. It's a great Godzilla movie. Um, better than this, the MonsterVerse stuff. And I told you, I like Monarch Le Legacy of Monsters. That was a great intro yeah. or it was a great setting into the MonsterVerse stuff. But Godzilla minus one, the uh, original Godzilla movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just good. It's just really good. That's I, what I, I've I heard. So much. Highly recommend you go and see that, or wait till it comes out. Either one. Um, one of my other ones is Gran Turismo. David Harbor. Um, this is just mm. because it. This one hits me because it's about video games. We all love video games. We've been playing video games for decades, and yeah. this is a true life story about video game to real racing. Uh, it's an amazing story. David Harbor does a great job. Um, highly underrated movie, I think. And then the last one, uh, A Man Called Otto which came out in January, mm -hmm. which I wanted to review. Tom Hanks, um, this is a right in the feels movie. And you're going to fucking cry. Really? Um, but a great, great fucking movie, yeah. Nice. Hmm. Sad story, but wonderful story at the same time. True right. story, yeah, right? Uh, a Man Called Otto, no. Oh, okay. Gran Turismo is. Yeah, A I know Man that Called is. Otto is just a, yeah. So those are my top three. Gran Turismo, A Man Called Otto, and Godzilla Minus One. Those are my top three of the year. Well, I have nice. heard Minus One is very, very good. I wanted to get to the theater to see it, but of course I've been <laughs> sick, so I haven't gotten around to it. I will probably, well, of course, watch it when it comes out. Uh, but I've heard it is very good. I've even heard people say it might be like the best movie of the year, like just in general. It is. It's good. Like, very good. People are saying, like, oh, fucking Barbie and Oppenheimer getting all the fucking hype, but that's, like, up there. That's what people are saying. What's the know. syndrome? Like, the, the it's survivor's guilt syndrome, basically. And, it, like, this guy, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> this fucking poor bastard just, he survives the first experience, and then, like, you know, people talk shit about him and shit. Right. And he's down in the gutters, and uh it, uh shit starts popping off again and he keeps surviving and it's just like yeah. this what what the fuck is the point it's like what the fuck is the point of it like i can't do anything about this fucking yeah. giant ass fucking monster i know nothing about it's just amazing it's really good well yeah so what i know i don't know too much about it but I, what i do know is that they did make godzilla like back to mm -hmm. the way he was originally like he's yes not fucking showing up to like save he don't give a shit yeah, yeah. He, he just exists in, in his way fuck y'all <laughs> well he has no he has no like 
he, I'm yeah, like he's feeling indifferent. their emotions. He's, he's just, doing him. Yeah, he's doing him. He just him. exists. He's not like destroying a city because he's evil. He's just like you're in my fucking way. Uh, yeah. I did. I did also read that apparently the um, so the director uh, Takashi Yamazaki. I hope I pronounced it right. He um was originally he he so apparently he was gonna make a um a a jaws remake i think mm, interesting if i read that correctly i'm not 100 percent certain um but uh yeah apparently this movie is heavily inspired from like the original godzilla from like 1954 um and uh yeah anyhow Really looking forward to seeing that. That's a good list. Man Called Otto. I remember you talking about that. I never got around to seeing it. Didn't seem like one of those movies that I'd like kind of give a shit about. Um, not that it's not yeah, good. Yeah, it's just one of those emo emotional roller coaster rides. Like this old man. Yeah. Uh, starting, you know, he's given up on life and he's has this lackadaisical, ah, fuck you guys. I'm just old. And right. Then, you know, life hits him, and you, you, it hits you too. It's just a really feel good. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is sad and also awesome at the same time. That's understandable. Tom Hanks delivers. He always does. I don't, I don't know if he's ever been in a bad movie. <laughs> Tom Hanks is good. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Marvin? Tell me your list. All right. So I got they clone Tyrone. Mm -hmm. That was my fourth. Is this in any particular <laughs> order? That's. A, no Bang. particular order. No, no particular, particular order. order. Okay. You was yours in any order, Dusty? No. Okay. Mine doesn't. But honestly, they clone Tyrone probably would be yeah. my favorite that we reviewed. Okay. After that yeah. would be uh uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, I thought about putting that on my that list. That one was too. on the bubble for me too. I was like, man, that was That's, so good. I don't know. It was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then last for me is actually Dumb Money. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. You had yeah, me until I that. I thought one. that one was good, but <laughs> I don't think it was movie That's of the year fair. for me. I, uh, but the the first two, absolutely, those were on my bubble. I was like, man, I don't know. I got to shuffle some shit around, maybe. But yeah, yeah. That's my a good favorite. They my favorite movie though hilarious. we didn't review was Oppenheimer. That yeah, was you've been saying that shit yeah. is great. We might have to, Oppenheimer's yeah. a banger too. Maybe we yeah. talk about it. Uh, maybe we we slot that in towards Oscar season coming up here soon because you know that's gonna probably win best picture so uh well it won I mean, best yeah, we'll motion picture yeah, golden globe i know that's the thing <laughs> with like the oscar we've talked about it before it's such a joke yeah we had the golden globes last week and we got the critics choice awards tonight i think yeah. oppenheimer got five last week at the golden globes yeah. and so it swept basically but yeah we will talk about that a little bit later like you just know you really just know movie. that fucking like what's gonna win well, whatever I'm surprised Killers of the Flower Moon's not getting a lot of love. Um, I heard that was really good as well. That was good too. It was just really long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie was ridiculously long. Awards. Yeah. Speaking of shows, by the way, I didn't mention uh, tonight, um, the, the the day we are recording, uh, True Detective episode one premieres. I'm very excited for this season. Yes. Um, all right, so that's a good list, Marvin. You had me. Teenage Ninja Turtles was great. I thought that movie was great. Uh, I thought about putting yes, it, it on my list. Um, don't quite feel the same about Dumb Money, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't need there. I based on I liked it. Well, so the our conversations fresh in my head because we I recently edited the I recently did the edited version of that conversation. You can go check it out on uh, YouTube if you haven't done so already. Mm. Shortened version <laughs> of just that conversation. And Marvin mentioned how you know that time meant a little bit maybe more to him than it did to me because you know it changed a lot of things for him um yep so totally understand uh why that movie would be yeah. it's all about how it relates to you yeah totally yep. yeah well that movie's like bringing you back to that point in time which is perfect that's awesome i didn't really have the same experience during that time period so that's you know from i, I don't know the movie to me was just like a little bit like as a movie, just mm, okay, that was cool. 
That was kind yeah, of the end of it. Uh, for that's, me. that's how I, feel. I mean, I remember the time vividly. Yeah. And I enjoyed that time. And it's fascinating to see some of the things that mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily know, even though I knew like a lot of it because of, you know, I was following it and I actually made some money on some of that shit. But yeah, uh, it wasn't, wasn't a top three for me. But yeah. I respect the choice. It's a good, it's a good movie. Um, I have a similar pick on my list. Um, so my list is in order i think mm. <laughs> uh so my my third movie and this was like uh, very neck and neck between guardians of the galaxy volume three and mm, forgot about that yeah and uh dungeons and dragons and for me mm, honestly surprising. dungeons and dragons uh edges it out a little bit <laughs> edging um <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, I thought was awesome because for one, it was, yeah. when we watched it to review it, review, we don't do reviews here, folks. When we watched it to talk about it, that's right. The first like half hour or hour of that movie, I like fucking hated it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then like it won me over. It, it pulled you in. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, this I love the movie, movie that'll pull awesome. you in. Yeah. Yeah. I just true. thought like the exposition part of it got, was like a little bit too like drawn out. But it was worth sure. it in the end. Uh, and then I've watched it since, like, a few times with other people who hadn't seen it. And everybody has, like, the same reaction. Like, wow, I can't believe how good this movie was. And now <laughs> I've read that what they might be open to doing a sequel for it. Uh, yep. What's his name? Has that mm -hmm. Chris Pine? Um, Chris Pine, yeah. So, yeah, I really like that movie. I thought it was super fun. Uh, it's a good D and D movie. I mean, well, for us, uh, we, it's a maybe. I don't know. You guys didn't really grow up with D and D like I no. did because I'm a little bit older. So yeah, uh, no. But I I played a lot of Baldur's Gate. There. So okay. Well, they, yeah. There you go. <laughs> My only um, knowledge of D and D comes from Stranger Things. Right. So beyond that is nothing. It's not. I have no attachment to it whatsoever. Um, however, I think in the age of Marvel. And how Hollywood is now like sort of MCU'd quite a bit in terms of like everybody trying to do a fucking franchise or like a universe and all this stuff. Right. It had like all mm. the flavors of a comic book movie that you would look for while being completely detached and unique from those things. Because yeah. let's face it, we are kind of inundated with Marvel movies nowadays, or just comic book movies in general, and they all are starting to feel kind of samey and stuff, which we've talked yep. about. We hope that trend is maybe ending. But, it again, it was like unique and stood on its own as a good movie with like things that I like about comic book movies. So for that reason, that uh, it was, was made it to my list. Guardians was great. Mm, I love nice. Guardians. Awesome. But I think that's just a given, so I kind of yeah. decided to skip it. Um, yeah, it was good. I don't know that it was the best Guardians <coughs> per se, but I, I, it was really good. But yeah, for sure. I just want to say shout out to all the kids out there that are keeping D and D alive because <laughs> there are still people out there that play D and D, yeah, and host and do all that stuff. And so the movies like that just keep that train rolling. And it's, it's so you played D and D. So. Uh, I played a little bit, yeah. Not 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 too much, but yeah, I played a little bit. I was gonna say, nice. did you play in like the thick was, of it in like the eighties? I 80s? was not a dungeon master uh, in yeah, the yeah, satanic back panic. In the day when, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm gonna skip my second movie and talk about my first overall pick because I think the next one is gonna be a little surprising for you guys. Maybe not, but my uh, my overall favorite movie of the year is They Clone Tyrone. I don't think. Uh, that mm. should be a surprise to you guys when we talked about it. I fucking love that movie. I've seen it multiple so times. Hilarious. <laughs> I hope I hope it gets some love at the Oscars. I don't think it will. I hope it does. I think Jamie Foxx was fucking unbelievable in that movie. They all were, but Jamie Foxx specifically was like unbelievable in that movie. Um, in fact, I recently saw her. It, what do we see her in, Marvin? And you pointed it out that was her, and I didn't even realize. Was it you? Um, um Tayana Paris. Was she, she was just in something else that I saw her in. Oh, the Marvels. I I did not realize that's what it was. Yeah, that she was. It's the same chick. Like, so mm. that blew me oh, away. Monica Rambeau. Yeah, yeah, because she's. It's like two incredibly different characters. 
right to the point yeah. where she's like unidentifiable it was, that, that was like that really blew me away but anyhow that's awesome yeah they clone tyrone was amazing it's fucking funny it's fucking it's like a it's like an effective thriller uh mystery like it's got a little bit of everything if you haven't watched it i mean honestly go fucking watch yep. that movie it is so fucking yep. good yeah that's so, a great one that was my favorite and it kind of like took us by surprise too i think i don't think we all expected it to be like that fucking good uh yeah no that was just, a netflix movie right yeah, yeah i just was. thought we were gonna had get a low some, budget too yeah i thought we were just gonna get yeah. some like kind of bullshit ass because we had you know if you we had watched the like, other jamie one Fox previously movie. the zombie movie yeah. the vampire or one. not the zombie movie the vampire movie yes and that was like we were kind of like yeah it was okay yeah so yeah. we i didn't have high expectations for this so maybe that's kind of why but like this movie like blew me away completely like it this it was smart it was great uh big shout out to jewel taylor i hope i can't wait to see what else that fucking dude does yeah um, that was his debut right uh well Actually, he wrote he wrote creed 2 he wrote it but mm. this is his di- directorial debut. this was his directorial sure. debut yeah you pretty sure what dusty um I oh no I was gonna say actually I, I actually well, I talked I watched Lift um which is a Netflix movie it's a Kevin Hart like oh yeah team up like thief movie and uh really good I was surprised Kevin Hart is not his usual I'm gonna make like fucking loud weird jokes and everything <laughs> he was basically serious the whole time that's interesting which was a nice fresh change of pace um, yeah but yeah good wow. good good heist movie it reminded me of the um. Holy shit. Uh, what was that heist <laughs> film with uh, a heist with Jackman? Uh, uh, Hackman. Heist with Hackman. Uh, it reminded me a lot of that, except with a new twist on it. So, yeah, um, Lyft was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Okay. Nice. Well, that's cool. Um, and then, okay, so I think in my heart, this is probably my favorite movie of the year, but I was trying to be a little bit objective about the list, like what is actually better. But uh, my final favorite movie of the year is one that I recently watched. Um, Marvin knows I watched it. I don't know if I told you, Dusty, but uh, Mr. Monk's Last Case. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask if you'd watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I have not gotten to see it yet, so I, I can see that being your number one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I mean, I was, like, hyped about it, and, like, I forgot about it somehow. Marvin actually brought but it up. I remember that. It lived up yep. to the hype. I don't even know if there was hype. It was just hype for me. Um, well, no, it lived. Well, you hyped it up. You're like, I loved Monk. I remember Monk. Mm-hmm. This is how I relate to Monk. I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you hadn't seen it, and we hadn't talked in a couple weeks because we had, didn't record. So it lived right. up to the hype for you, is what I'm saying. It totally. Did, yeah, yeah. Which it is was good. It was amazing. Uh, because so like, you know, you we've talked about how like I think Ghostbusters Afterlife is like the bar for like how to do a franchise revival or whatever, but this in terms of that is just as good for me. Um, it did like all the things that you would need it to do refer to all the different things you would want it to refer to from what you, <laughs> the, from like the source material that yeah. you love. And then also like expand it and like make it something to go forward. Um, and it brought back everybody, Tony Shalhoub as monk, which by the way, Tony Shalhoub has won so many fucking Emmys for this role. <laughs> and this show has just won so many Emmys. <laughs> Um, so he's back and like most of the cast is back. I think everybody's back for the most part. And it's just, uh, it's funny cause this dude, for those of you that don't know, Monk is like, he's like the greatest detective. And, uh, the only case he's never been able to solve is the death of his wife who was seemingly murdered by a car bomb. She was a journalist and it's the one case that he can't solve. Uh, but he also has like crippling OCD and anxiety. So it, that kind of like makes him a good detective because he has such an insane attention to detail that like he'll spot things that nobody else does. And the story centers around Monk post pandemic. So it like puts this dude who's a fucking crazy germaphobe in the middle of a pandemic, which I thought is fucking hilarious. <clears throat> and then this last case, he feels like. Basically, it puts him in a situation where he feels like despite... I think he has solved like 172 cases or homicides. And this is him like, well, everything I've done has been for nothing because the world is still fucked up. Like, I've done nothing. I've not made an impact on the world. So it's kind of like him dealing with that personally. 
in his final case, but it was just really fucking good. I loved it. And uh, there's like rumblings from him and the creator about like potentially bringing it back uh, as oh. a show for a revival. So that'd be fucking cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. And if you, <laughs> and if you want to laugh, they mention this a lot. There's a list of Mug's greatest fears. Germs, needles, dentists, milk, death, snakes, lightning, mushrooms, heights, crowds, <laughs> elevators. Why do they have snakes? That's his top, that's his list of top uh, fears. But there's a milk. running, yeah, there's a running joke where like every so often they'll, med, they'll like run off his, his greatest fears and it's just like some fucking crazy things where it's like <laughs> egg, egg whites, fallopian tubes. <laughs> Fear itself, germs, like <laughs> random bullshit is very funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was great. I was a huge fan. Um, nice. That's a good list. Yeah. I think so, there's two that's runners the up, review. maybe. What are the runners that up? We could, that we could we agree with, bubble, possibly. Marvin. It's just two. Go ahead. One of them is the holdovers, <laughs> which we were going to yep. review. I still want to review it. Uh, yeah, you guys, it. you guys pulled a rug on me. Oh, you haven't seen it. Oh, we my were... God. It's so good. Oh, you haven't watched it yet. I still didn't watch Damn. it now. Oh, yeah. it's, that's it's why. Really that's could be because I thought we were gonna do the holdovers, and then we were supposed to record, and Dan wasn't available, and then you guys recorded without me after. But you guys did. Um, what was the movie you did? Uh, watch Leave the World Behind. It was oh, like yeah. I thought we were doing the holdovers. That was good too. So yeah, I had to watch that one the other day. Which mm, did you watch Leave the World Behind? I did. I feel like you would uh -oh. love that movie. You're the fucking dude. You're you're fucking what's his name's character? Uh, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Yeah, the fucking <sighs> the prepper. It, it's okay. Yeah. Um, Ooh. it's way too long. But Ooh. um, I didn't think that. Mm. I didn't agree with any of the criticism. Just talk to talk about it briefly. No, we can talk about it. What's the other? What's the other? What's the other? Uh, the other one was talk to me. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Well. I don't know. You know what? Um, I, I actually rewatched Constantine the other day, the show. Nice. Yeah. And I was like r reminded immediately because he pulls out a hand mm -hmm. and, and lights the fingers. They're like candles to talk to fucking dead people. And I'm like, <sighs> that show okay, is great. So do they pull that from lore or do they pull that from Constantine? Because that's a great mm. idea. Like, it's probably some sort of lore. But that show, just to briefly talk about, it, that show is amazing. Anyhow. Yes, it is. I don't agree with you about that one, Marvin. That that movie was like okay, but it was I, I had actually talked extensively to my buddy George you about it. You said this. you liked it. I did like it. I did not like it. However, I think it has some problems. I think it does a lot of cool stuff, like we talked about when we talked the lighting, all that stuff. But it's a very like content type of movie. Uh mm -hmm. My and my my buddy George and I talked about this. Like, oh, you're starting to see a lot of movies and television shows be filmed, sort of similar to YouTube content. Oh, I see. And there's yeah. like a very specific way that, like, a style of editing and shooting and stuff that is now bleeding into shows and movies to sort of make them more aligned with what the younger folks are into. And it's like sure, yeah. content with a capital C, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that part of the movie I did not care for. However, I thought there was a lot of cool stuff about it. But I don't think it's... A, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> um, yeah, Holdovers I wanted to see for sure. I heard that was really good. Um, it, it, it's great. Uh, Paul Giamatti does not disappoint. Yeah. It's a, that's a good movie. Yeah. All um, right. You know it was released the in the behind. summer. And it's a Christmas movie. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. No, it really feel good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, there's some great actors in that. Um, and that's just a good story. Um, that one, a two, I thought maybe a little bit long in the tooth. I'm tired of two and a half hour movies. I don't know. Maybe I'll just mm. keep complaining about it. They're going to keep making yeah, them, so of, it doesn't matter. But They definitely are. Mm. So yeah. leave the world behind. You didn't care for it? Uh, no, I thought it was... Um, Interesting take, but uh, I don't know. There are just so many things in that movie where I'm like, okay, well, this is this is just kind of weird. Like, oh yeah, look at all these deer just surrounding us. <laughs> There's just so much stuff that's just dismissed for nothing, and then everything that's taken for something. Like, I would have done it completely different. It, like, it, you put me in that situation. Yeah, I'm gonna find. I find it interesting because it's fascinating because it's end of the world type shit. But I'm you... gonna do things completely different in that. Did you watch our video on it? 
or no? Uh, I have not watched the full review, no. Okay, well, everything you just said is exactly the point of the movie, I think. Right. We talked about this. Mm. Like, every, like, your criticisms of it, totally valid. Like, what's the fucking point with the deer? And this, uh, But, like, those are all, like, that's the point of the movie. Whether people like it or not, because I've had, I've seen many people, like, say they liked it or they didn't like it, and they didn't really understand it, or they didn't, like, the, this is a plot hole, or this wasn't explained. Yeah, no, there were some amazing scenes, like, um, uh, what's his name, like, crying to Kevin Bacon, like, I, uh, I don't know, I am a useless I'm a man, useless man. my yeah. <laughs> son is sick, yeah, yeah. and I am doing everything I can, like, that, that thing, that, that hits for me, like, it, for yes. Sure. That is what somebody would do in that situation. But like some of the other shit, like, yeah, let's break out some fucking R and B and have a little fucking dance session while the fucking world's well, ending. You know, like, well, that's the point, like, right? The, you're gonna get some of that. You're gonna get some of that in in that because just you just so much time to do shit. But well, eh. yeah. So I guess I think I think what he did was. And if you've watched any of his other stuff, he he has like a weird just style about him, Sam Espinel. And uh, I think that carried over here, which I thought was effective for a disaster film, because it wasn't really a disaster yeah. film, though it was. But yeah. like he created like this sense of confusion for the audience, I think. Sure, yes. So no, what it did a good job there. So what people are like criticizing as plot holes and stuff, like the deer or the kid's fucking mysterious illness. I've seen a lot of people criticize these things. These aren't, like, plot holes or things that the film just decided to not explain. It's purposefully confusing to the audience because it's confusing to the people we're watching experience it. And I think that was the point yeah. of the whole movie, is that it's not about the disaster that's going on. Like, though the end... A lot of people were pissed off about the ending, too. Of like, well, we got no fucking answer. But, like, you... Probably no, I didn't mind the ending. Well, you don't even really I, I know. I could actually relate to the little girl. Like, she did some stuff that was a little bit weird, but like, uh, fucking one of my favorite lines in the movie. She's like, they were like, wait, you watch the West Wing? She's like, only this Aaron Sorkin stuff. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out Aaron Sorkin. He makes some good TV. But, <laughs> but that shit was fucking hilarious. Yeah, but what, what <laughs> the way they you? ended it, I was like, yeah, she wants to watch the last episode. Let's go. I, I just think the vague nature of everything, like it's it's sure. shown throughout the whole movie. There's so many beats it takes, and I, and I know Marvin and I talked about it when we talked about the movie. Like, there's so many things that happen where you're meant to just be confused. Like the scene with the Spanish lady who was fucking freaking out, and he was like, "I I don't know what mm -hmm. you're talking about." And he just drives off, or the flyers that fall. So, like he says, "Oh, I got this flyer," and then the kid comes in and is like, "Oh, that says Death to America. I know that for a fact." But he doesn't know that for a fact. He's just saying. Yeah. He just thinks he does. He thinks he saw it in a video game, and and I think that whole thing, uh, culminates with Kevin Bacon. In that scene where Kevin Bacon's like, I'll tell you who, who's behind this. He's like, it's the fucking Chinese. And then the, uh, what's his name? Ethan Hawke goes, you think so? Really? He goes, <laughs> yeah, either them or the Koreans. And it just showcases that like nobody knows what the fuck's going on. If we were you, if you were really in that situation. But that's situation, not entirely true either, though, because uh, could be the anything. guy is like, yeah, my buddy's in the defense department and he made it like he's keeping everything low key like. I'm going to release as little bit of information as I can to you. I'm going to tell you a little bit at a time. I'm going to no, drip but... some information to you because we're stuck together. And if I was in a situation like that, I'd be like, look, this is what I know. This is what we're in because we're stuck together. But and I need you to be with me for us to survive. So for him to like hide that information felt a little like. Eh, but that's exactly the know. point. But that's exactly the point. The movie is about. The movie is literally about the things that you that I joke with you about that you like you have gripes over always the movie's mm -hmm. literally about that like is that like <laughs> yeah. like i wouldn't do that or like she could have done this differently like that's what the movie's literally about about how people are in these like it's just a, it's like a sure it's, yeah it's, i get that yeah that's just how it is and and like that's another example of nobody knows fucking shit except what they think they know. He, each person has their own, like, interpretation about what's going on, but they don't know. Yep. Nor does the audience, which is why I thought it was fucking great that by the end you just see the city getting fucking bombed and you're like, wait, what? 
Like it could be anything. <laughs> yeah. It could be They're aliens. Friends. Yeah. It could be fucking. It could be aliens. It could, could be, be the Koreans. It could be the Koreans. It could be ISIS. It could be anything. But it's really cool that everybody has their own sort of interpretation of it. Um. And like his Mahershala Ali's was like, oh yeah, it's definitely these fucking die. No, it's this fucking. It's just yeah. People, he told me this was the thing he feared the yeah, most. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, makes it's like sense. you know, and, and that and they that's keep it vague. I get that, but, but that happens. That's human nature. We saw it happen through like COVID, right? Like you had people fucking oh, it's the wet markets and fucking pangolins, and then it's like the fucking lab. But leak if something like that <laughs> actually really literally happened, it we would not be that uninformed. The world is too big right now. There would be people disseminating misinformation, but the real information would be out there and there'd be deniers about it, which would also make for an interesting story. So I think where it falls short for me is like, it could have been better in the way that they delivered, like what's going on? What are we doing? Because they just kept it vague and ambiguous instead of like, okay, these people know what's going on and they're trying to deliver this information. These people don't know what's going on. They're delivering disinformation. These people know what's going on, and they're also delivering well, disinformation. Well, also dis- keep in mind, one thing that you may be missing, <laughs> well, not missing, is just glossing over, is that this is all happening in, like, two days. This is the first two days of whatever's yeah. happening. So the information that would probably come out would be later on, once the government, like... Is it just fuck, two days? Yeah, it's, like, literally, like, one or two days, I think, if I remember correctly. But I, I don't know. Anyhow, I enjoyed it, and uh, I think Marvin enjoyed it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was good, but I, I don't know. It wasn't. It didn't blow me away. But I That's enjoyed fair. it. Yeah. No, it didn't blow me away either. I just, I, I mean, I saw people like shitting on it when it came out. I no. so much so that I expected it to be like terrible, and then I was like, oh wait, this is actually fucking good. Like I love yeah, what they no, did. There were some the, things I probably would have done different personally, but I did enjoy it. It was in it the was situation, or if you made the movie. <laughs> If I made the movie oh, or in the situation, yeah, yeah. both. That's both. <laughs> One thing we could all agree on, Mahershala Ali fucking killed it in that movie. He was fucking yeah, great. Yep. He did. Mm-hmm. Very excited. I thought they were uh, all I mean, all the, uh, they, they were all, yeah, the acting was fairly, I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, it's a star-studded and there, there wasn't like, I don't buy that act. It was, I mean, some of I thought Julia a Roberts bit. a little bit was a little bit forced. Like, she was like, being like force like, I don't know she seemed a little bit unnaturally bitchy for a little bit but I don't know I think that came around well too. and then also unnaturally like just distant to what was going on I mean until she freaked out yeah I don't know and well, there's just well, a couple scenes that I was like man that's just a message no that's not how that's gonna go down in that scene that's fair um but yeah, I mean that's that's it. That's our 2023 wrap up. Let's uh, what mm-hmm. what kind of news you got for us now in 2024, Dusty? There's a lot of stuff well, we missed. I know that. Yeah, for a fact. I mean it's, a little bit has been piling up. I try to trim it down because we haven't talked in a while. So let's just start out. Um, Universal shout mm-hmm. out. Yeah, highest grossing studio at the box office in 2023. Oh wow, uh, that's wow. the first time since 2015. It wasn't Disney. Wait, Universal. So that's a long. A long fucking time. Yeah, Universal. I think it would be um, WB. They had 24 films, including Mario, Oppenheimer, oh. and Megan, mm. that oh. pulled in $4.907 billion versus Disney's 17 films, including Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, Indiana Jones, Little Mermaid, and Wish, which pulled in wow. $4.827 billion. So they were $0.1 billion off from being at the top again. But <laughs> um, shout out to fucking, you know, Mario and Oppenheimer for fucking blowing up Disney. Universal uh, Megan was pretty good. I didn't see Uni- Megan yet. Yeah. No, I have not seen Megan yet either, but Universal was Oppenheimer. And this is the first time since 2014 that, uh, that Disney didn't hit with a billion dollar movie. And it's the first time in a long time that they didn't have a movie in the top three. Um, they had the most in the top 10, uh, but their sex was their their success was watered down by their costs. You know, um, right. some of these, mo- you know, Disney makes quarter of a billion dollar movies and they need them to make a billion dollars. So they're like, you know, Universal's yeah. like, yeah, we'll spend we'll spend one hundred thousand dollars on this movie and let's see if it makes a billion dollars. And if it does, they're fucking they're doing better than Disney when <laughs> Disney's like. Quarter of a bill, quarter of a billion every time, two hundred fifty thousand. So hmm. I thought that was fascinating. That Universal actually, like with Oppenheimer and Mario and Megan and whatnot, they 
They were the top of the box office with 24 films. So shout out Universal. Yep. Shout out. Big. Um, yeah. And then uh, let's see. WB Motion Pictures Group co-CEOs Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi, who were in charge before James Gunn took over. Mm -hmm. um, they made an announcement with Tom Cruise. I don't know if you guys saw this. They are in business together for the foreseeable future. They've signed a contract. This is something that Zaslav, uh, David, he like uh, apparently iterated, like, we need to get Tom Cruise in the studio. <laughs> we need to get So they signed. Yeah, we need, we need to get Tom Cruise. Like, he, <clears throat> well, I mean, it kind of makes sense because he's made so much fucking, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, his movies have made 13 billion doll hairs worldwide. A lot of Tom hairs. Cruise in his in his 50 fuck or five decades, yeah, 50 years of acting. So Zaslav's like, let's get Tom Cruise over here. So they're building um they're building some uh, new IP with him yeah. as well as old IP. They're gonna do a new Top Gun, I guess. That's already in the works, but he's gonna have offices at the studios and whatnot. So. Yeah. yeah, big, big, big stuff for WB right there. They got Tom Cruise on board. Um, Shout out to Scientology. Uh, no, we don't need to talk about, yeah. <laughs> Max's <laughs> live sports add-on, still free for a while. That's irrelevant. James Gunn confirms the Superman script is done, debunks, yeah. debunks the Jen, Jensen Eckel rumors. Um, of Batman. And Andy uh, Muschietti's The Brave and the Bold. There's no script. Uh, of course, it's false. So, yeah, the people were throwing around. Apparently, people want Jensen Eccles to be the Batman in yeah. the DC, which he is in the animated DC because I've watched uh, the last couple of mm -hmm. animated movies they did, including, um, holy shit, what is the name of that movie? The Okay, can't think of it right now. Yeah, we'll just move along from that. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. He's Batman in Crisis on Infinite Earth. Part one is out. I don't know if you've watched that yet, Dan. I, I haven't. Hear about it? It's it's okay. Uh, it's you know it's he does story. the voice, right? He does the voice of Batman. Yeah. Uh, and then they they have uh, who is it? It's Darren Chris as Superman and Earth Two Superman. Santa Kadic is Wonder Woman and mm. Superman. The the thing about the the animated stuff is they have like one voice actor doing like four or five characters because they put so many characters in those animated stuff. But um, gotcha, yeah. And then uh, his brother Sean Gunn, he's found his role uh, in his brother's reboot of DCU. Apparently, Maxwell Lord, he's going to be an evil businessman and frequent adversary to Wonder Woman. So um, Sean Gunn, yeah, he's he's in the DCU now. He came over from Marvel. Yep. Uh, apparently he's going to be referenced in the background of Superman Legacy. It's not confirmed if he's going to be a cameo or if it's going to be a voiceover or whatever, but he will pretty big be villain. referenced in the Superman. Yeah, pretty big villain, yeah. So uh, he'll be the – he's also the voice of Weasel and uh, GI Robot for Creature Commandos. So. I, have to, I have to talk about <laughs> it. I know you guys aren't big on the uh, <laughs> Snyder versus DC fucking versus James Gunn uh, stuff. Uh, over on Twitter, I'm like completely inundated by it now because I've like commented on a couple things. It's all I get in my feed. Right, uh, yep. And essentially in comic book movie Twitter land, you get like the Zack Snyder people versus like the people who are like, yo, guys, chill the fuck out with Zack Snyder. He's just okay. Uh, and these people, first of all, that fucking Christopher Nolan thing that you mentioned where Christopher Nolan like shouted out Zack Snyder and was like, oh yeah, yeah. they are like running yes. with this shit. Yeah. They are, they mm. think like, they think Christopher Nolan like handpicked Zack Snyder to make Superman and like he co-wrote Man of Steel and like they're going crazy over this whole thing when like Christopher Nolan was like literally just a like, he just went to WB and was like, hey, I made a realistic Batman movie that made, like, a ton of money. I think we could do the same thing with Superman. That's, like, the that's like the extent of his involvement in Man of Steel and, like, the <laughs> Snyderverse. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you are comparing yeah. this fucking guy that makes, like, literal, like, cartoons to one of the greatest filmmakers of all time is hilarious. I just want to point that out. But these people are going fucking crazy. And one of the things that they're doing is, like, they're trying to make these compare, draw compare, like, not comparisons, but argue that, like, 
James Gunn is going to ruin the DC and Zack Snyder was the hero of it or whatever the fuck. Classic. And uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Go ahead. What, <laughs> what, what did you say? You were talking okay. about James Gunn? Uh, we were, well, I mean, oh, we were talking about James Gunn and how he confirmed the yeah, Superman yeah, yeah. script and how he's hired his brother, Sean, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. in some of the stuff. But, I got yeah. it. He was saying that people, so people are, are upset because one of the, one of the criticisms, valid criticisms of the DCEU oh. by Zack Snyder was that the rush to introduce these other characters with no, oh, yeah. With no like build up or whatever. It's just like, hey, here's the Justice League. Have fun caring about them. And you know, you know nothing, which I think we all agree is a stark contrast to the Marvel strategy of like slowly but surely introducing characters that you could then like care about over the course of 10 years. Um, well, that's what Marvel used to do. That's not sure. what Marvel does now. Sure. <laughs> so these Zack Snyder nerds are now jumping on the fact that there are supposedly quite a bit of characters that will appear in the Superman movie. And they're like, well, why aren't you fucking criticizing this movie for introducing characters quickly? And it's like, well, we haven't seen it yet. So I don't know if we could criticize it. That's number one. But number two, if, if what James Gunn has explained is any indication, it's very clear, at least to me, he's made it very clear that this is a world that superheroes exist in. Already, yeah. we're not. That's that's the yeah. We're in an established world where Marvel started out. They're like, right. Let's show you a world where it's just normal people. And Tony Stark develops a tech and says, Is "Yeah, the I'm first Iron superhero." Man. Right. And let's slowly introduce the evolution of right. mutations and uh, aliens mm -hmm. and all. Let's just slowly bring it in. We got time. Right. James Gunn doesn't have that time. Mm -mm. The the. Warner Brothers Discovery is struggling and they yep. need on the clock. But, well, I mean, we're not fucking idiots. Everybody knows who Superman is right. and everybody knows who Batman is. Everybody knows who the trio is. We don't need to be uh, spoon Wonder fed. Woman, Batman, and Superman. We right. know we don't need another goddamn origin story. But let's open it up with a good movie. Maybe you see this character. Maybe you don't know who the fuck that guy is. Look right. him up. And if you find it interesting, we'll make a movie. But it's coming. But just because we don't get an origin doesn't mean these characters aren't going to have origin films. There's a sure, difference. Absolutely. Spider-Man yes. Homecoming in for the Marvel was an origin movie introducing Spider-Man and Peter Parker to the MCU, but it's not an origin story of Spider-Man. We know how Spider-Man becomes Spider-Man. In fact, they mention it like briefly in Homecoming, sorry, Marvin, spoilers, I know you haven't seen it yet, when Ned <laughs> is like, so you got fucking spider powers? Can you spit poison? And he's like, no, Ned. Like, that's his origin story in that movie. So just because characters are going to appear in a world where Superman exists, like, this, that's what the movie's about. The movie's about how Superman, Superman in a world with heroes, other heroes, and, like, balancing that whole thing. So it's like, shut the fuck up. Anyhow, can I have it the news? <laughs> okay. I've seen Homecoming. You have seen Homecoming? Like, yeah. When the fuck did you see Homecoming? Seen, remember, I saw Homecoming. I haven't seen uh, No Way the Home. The full trilogy? You yeah. haven't seen the full trilogy. Well, they all, they all have Home in it, so it gets confusing. It was Homecoming, yeah. Far From Home, and No Way Home. Homecoming is the one with uh, <laughs> yeah. Michael Keaton. It's confusing. Michael Keaton, yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. When the hell did you see that one? I feel like I've been begging we you to watch it, it forever. I don't remember that nope. shit. No, yeah. We talked no, about I, it. I, did I you like that, it? Yeah. I don't remember. I loved it. Yeah, it was good. But you yeah. didn't like Tom Holland. You don't like Tom Holland as Spider Man. I mean, he's not my Spider Man, but he's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> he's got one more in his contract, right? And then we'll see what goes from there. Yeah, we'll see. He needs to uh, be the fucking right. well, face. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Still on WB. Uh, this is the last bit of news. <laughs> and this is how old, this is how long it's been since we recorded because this was like the 20th of <laughs> December. Right. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav and Paramount CEO Bob Backish met on the 20th to discuss the contours of a possible merger between the two companies. Uh, Paramount mm -hmm. is struggling even um, amongst, you know, a decent run this year. They didn't do as good as Universal or Disney, but they did all right. Um, but, yeah, uh, apparently... Um, Zaslav seems interested in obtaining the IP, but that was several weeks ago. And I guess what's being said right now is 
the whole company might not be for sale, but Sherry Redstone, who is the daughter of the mogul, Mr. Redstone, I forget his name. Uh, she's interested in selling her controlling interest. So Zaslav still might be interested in attaining that controlling <laughs> interest so he get the IP. But we'll see. You know, WB, they like buying shit up because they just want to build their IP because they've been struggling for so long. So we'll see how that goes. Will WB buy Paramount? Who knows? Or will Paramount Plus still be its own thing and you'll have to subscribe to it? Who knows? But if they could roll that into the Max thing, that would be uh, amazing, I guess. I mean, it's a merger of another media company, which... There's only going to be a couple left by the time we talk about this <laughs> next year. So we'll see. And they're all going to be $60 a pop. Yeah, mm. it's going to be Disney and WB <laughs> and uh, Universal, I guess. I don't know. Crazy. But yeah, on to Disney. Um, real quick update for the movies. Marvel Studios is considering bringing Thunderbolts forward to May 2nd mm. and delaying the Fantastic Four to the July 25th. I think they're flipping those two. May I interrupt you quickly? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Speaking of Thunderbolts, did you watch the interview that I sent you guys in Discord with, uh, um, what's his name? And his I probably did not while I was on traveling, no. So uh, Kurt Russell and his son Wyatt were doing an interview oh, right, right, right. for Monarch, mm -hmm. and uh, he was asked about Thunderbolts, and he was like, oh, well... Yeah, basically, he was like, you know, he was saying the actor thing, but he was like, oh, yeah, I'm friends with the guy directing it, and I know he's got, like, a real, we have a really unique uh, take on what we're going to be doing. It's like, we hope this is going to be different for the MCU, yada, yada, yada. He just seemed pretty positive on it, but anyhow, go ahead. All right. Well, for those of you that thought Kevin Feige was going to bring our DJ back, yeah. not gonna happen. Oh, yeah? He Until did a piece does. with Vanity Fair. I think he said, uh, this is his quote. We're going to keep that moment and not touch that moment again. Mm, nice. He said of uh, Iron Man's death in 2019. We all, worked, we all worked very hard many years to get to that, and we would never want to magically undo it in any way. It took them 10 movies to get to that point. So when they do reboot, we will have Tony Stark. We will have Iron Man. It will not be our DJ, and I don't think we're going to see him. We maybe see an alternative version of him in Secret Wars, but I, uh, it sounds like Listen, Feige's a no on that. Uh, that's great. I love to hear that. However, he's saying a no until they are in fucking panic mode. They're not in panic mode yet, <laughs> but when they get into panic sure. mode and they got to, first of all, I don't even know where that came from he's, because just like two months, a month ago, we were talking, we were talking about well, how Vanity Fair, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, a month ago we were talking about how fucking rumors came out that like, they're ready to get the team back together, the old team. Yeah, well, that's the, I mean, that's the so, thing is, you know, rumors happen and Feige sits down and says, no, we worked too fucking hard to make that moment in the MCU mm -hmm. a climax. So we're not going to go back and undo that. RDJ seems like he's done in the MCU is what it sounds like to me. So hopefully they better keep the him case, dead. But yeah, that's, that's, the, only, you, that's the only time I've ever cried in a Marvel movie. So, okay. Yep. If they if they tarnish yep. that for on me, left, I'm buddy. done with Marvel. On your left, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I uh, okay. I mean, that makes I'm I'm glad to hear that. I don't as much <laughs> as I love RDJ. Keep him yeah, gone. It sounds like he's done, and I'm okay with that. Like I said, I want them to reboot it. I want a new Iron Man. I want a new Tony Stark. Well, that, I want to see. You're not going to see. I want to see. For a long I want to see. Uh, we're not that far off, I don't think. With yeah, everything that's happened, uh, we have not <laughs> talked about Jonathan Majors yet, but no. we'll get there. Uh, Mahershal Ali uh, spoke with EW about Blade uh, because people were getting were a little bit worried about this because of the everybody thought maybe he was going to jump out or the, the rewrites and everything. Feige hated it. Uh, Mahershal Ali said, we're working on it. That's the best I could tell you. I'm really encouraged with the direction of the project. I think we'll be back at it relatively soon. This was shortly after the strikes ended, so it sounds like after Feige sat down and took a took a bite out of it, uh, they're back on track. So, nice. Hopefully, that's gonna be like one of the good things of this phase because this phase has yeah. fucking sucked. I'm gonna say it now. Uh, he could be a better blade than Wesley. No, he 100 percent will uh, be a better blade than Wesley Snipes. 
Hundred <laughs> percent. I said okay. he can be. Now I he still will be. stand by. Oh, I'm saying he will. Be. Blade is <laughs> one of the best Marvel movies ever made, including I agree. all the shit that they put out since. But I do not disagree with you that he he could. He's he could got top the top because bro. that was the '90s, and they didn't have the tech and the tech technology or whatever yeah. to fucking make it even better. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> Blade uh, my time is, to shine hello go ahead I was just gonna say Blade those movies are from a different time and yeah, they were that's good what I'm saying, yeah. they were good f- I don't know if they hold up to the current Marvel oh yeah stuff. they still do I still go back and watch them every now and again no no they're no. fucking great they hold up to time but they I don't know if they hold up in comparison to the latest like comic book movies have changed now what what is expected sure. from a comic book movie has changed and that's a little it has to be different. in the universe that's why Blade was great because it wasn't in any yeah. universe. It was just fucking Blade. Yeah, yeah. That's what made it Dusty, great. I think so. you should go for Whistler. I think you would be a good Whistler. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I can see it. Be a Whistler. You got oh, it. Man. You got the look. I thought you said Whistler. Oh, the, like a Whistler. Wh- whistler. Um, no, his his buddy was Whistler. Yeah, he was, whistler, he was yeah. the old man in Blade. No, no, I know, yeah. but I thought he said Whistler oh, okay. at first, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh. Uh, I probably did. No, I don't know. You did <laughs> Whistler. No, <laughs> um, our one of our favorite leakers, my time to shine. Hello, um, said that Tony, Steve, Natasha, etc., will be recast after the Secret Wars soft reboot. Say that again. X Men. Who will be Tony, recast? Tony Stark. Uh huh. Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff will be recast. Will oh, all shit. be recast. After the Secret Wars War. And this is what I was saying. Like, yeah, I don't believe this fucking guy. They 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 can't do <laughs> X-Men. They can't do X-Men without Iron Man and Captain America. Everybody wants to see yeah. the Avengers and the mutants yeah, but, either fight each other or join each other to fight against a goddamn but fucking guess universal. What nobody fucking... wants to see. <laughs> nobody wants to see an Iron Man that is not Robert Downey Jr. Nobody I do, wants absolutely. to see. No. Yeah, I do. Well, you're I the do. one person. On I'm Earth. ready for the reboot. I don't mind it. No, I'm ready for the reboot. No, I don't you're, mind if it you're telling me you're wait. Okay. So let me get this Marvin too soon no, for reboot. Uh, you. Would you rather see Captain America and Iron Man with the X-Men or would you rather see the X-Men without any of the characters that we've seen so far? Even if nah, it's a different guess. I, I want to see them together for sure. You mm. want to see them together. That's what everybody fucking wants. So, Dan, you're in the minority here. Marvin's not you're the only one that fan. doesn't want to see. Wow. You're the only now, one that doesn't want to see. Now I'm not a Marvel recast. fan. You're wow. not. You haven't even seen all the shit. You just no, haven't. that's bullshit. That don't no. mean shit. No, no, no. These stories they require mm. these characters to be present. They re- it requires it. it. Depends on what they it's do. Necessary. But, yeah. And I've been telling you it's going to happen. <laughs> I've been telling you for how long? How long I say they're going to have to reboot it? They got to bring these characters back because they need them. And they've been struggling since they've been gone almost. Right? So, anyhow. We'll see. Uh, Jonathan Majors, guilty. Two counts of harassment and assault. Other charges he was acquitted of. He has been dropped from Avengers King Dynasty. Uh, uh, Avengers has now been renamed to Avengers 5. Uh, Blank Mm. slate on that. Uh, He's been dropped from pretty much all of his projects, I think. Yeah. So, rip him. Uh, Not a good look. Uh, hopefully he can recover from this, but uh, it's not looking good. And so we'll see where they go from there. Um, did you see his yeah, little fucking in- cry interview? I didn't. I didn't no, see I it. I did not watch. No, he was supposed to. Yeah, I did not see his first interview after. Uh, I was like, yeah, I don't really give a shit. Whatever. You fucked up, bro. Sorry about it. Yeah. Um, Steven Yun. Exits Marvel Thunderbolts. This is nothing to do personally. This is just a time conflict thing because the actor strike fucked everything up. He was on board and he has other stuff that he's involved in. So uh, we won't get to see him and Thunderbolts. Uh, we were reported earlier that he was cast, but not going to happen now. Um, okay. And then the last piece of Marvel information or Disney information, Steve Ditko's estate has settled its lawsuit with Marvel. Did you nice. hear about this, Dan? I did not. August 2021, the estate filed a notice of copyright termination regarding the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Uh, creators and heirs could reclaim their rights after a certain amount of time. This prompted other authors to come forward and Marvel filing lawsuits. Uh, they reached a deal um, with all but the Ditko estate in June 2023. 
the Hollywood Reporter stated attorneys reached an amicable settlement and expect a stipulation dismissal with prejudice to be filed in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, 1962, amazing, fan, uh, amazing fantasy and strange tales is where these characters came from. Right. Steve Ditko's estate uh, wanted the rights to this and wanted, you know, the heritage to this. We've talked about this a lot. It happened with Superman. It's happened with lots of characters. And apparently it seems like Marvel has settled the suit with them because they were fighting. And uh, so maybe, the, you know, that's a feel-good story for the Ditko estate. Yeah. Nice. Ditko, sorry. But, uh, Amicable, yeah. huh? That's like, that's like Amical, nine figures. What it says, yeah. Nine figures. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, yeah. Disney's for sure. It. That's good. Yeah. Um, and then on to everything else. Uh, let's see. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, we'll do a couple movie mm. things. That's moved up its release date to May 10th. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Sony, Sony bumped Ghostbusters Empire's uh, release date up one week to March 22nd. So oh, there's soon. been some movie shuffles around. So we'll get Frozen we'll get Empire. A week. Frozen Empire. That's right. Very excited for that. We'll Did you see earlier. the image that came out? Just the other day about it, we see yes. Miss mm -hmm. Annie Potts finally in the yes. Ghostbusters Front uniform. Center. Looks great. Everybody's. They a said there's gonna be. A, <laughs> they said the the first movie, you know, it laid. You know, we talked about how it was it was uh, faithful to the first, but its own. Yeah. But it also, you know, went back to the. They say this one is gonna dig a little more into the lore of the original movie, so hmm. it's gonna be a little bit more. More in the lore than the first one? More into the lore than the first one. Because the first one kind of, I mean, the first one was just the kids trying to figure out what happened. Like, oh, you know, my yeah, grandpa. Yeah, but, uh, but the my... villain was fucking Zool, and they expanded <laughs> well, on that a little bit more. That's because and... it's a, yeah, what do you call it? It's a, it's, a, it's a requel is what you would call that one. Sure. So this one is not going to be a requel. It's going to actually be like a sequel to the requel, which is going to dig deeper into the lore of the first two. Is I guess because yeah. all the characters are back. I mean, everybody except for obviously the people who are dead. Right. So, so Harold Ramis. Yeah, Harold. I wonder if they're going to bring back Rick uh, Moranis. That'd be so sick. <laughs> who knows? Well, he is coming we'll back see. for that fucking uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing. <laughs> like that was announced like a year or two ago, but maybe they could get him back for fucking a quick little Ghostbusters cameo. Well, we'll see. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about Tom Cruise doing a big deal with WB. I don't know if this is going to be a WB movie, but Emily Blunt um, was talking with uh, Vanity Fair. And this is her quote. I'm just going to quote her from here. Doug and I talk about it all the time. I know Tom wants to do it, hopefully at some point, but it's timing. But it's also been 10 years since we made it. There was an amazing script in the work, but I think it would only have worked if we shot it eight years ago. I'm not saying that we're ancient, but you have to factor in it's been 10 years. This is her talking about doing a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow, which I thought was a good movie. Uh, her and Tom Cruise did Edge of Tomorrow. Did you guys, you guys have both seen that, right? I did, yeah. I think that movie's great. You've not seen it, seen it Marvin? Mm -mm. Oh. What else is new? God Shocker. damn it. Make Marvin watch. <laughs> Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, well, Emily Blunt, Tom Cruise, she's, she wants to make a sequel, but she thinks it might be eight years too late. If they can't squit, fit it in, they won't, but she's willing to do it, so we'll see how that goes. And then uh, the screenplay is almost finished, but is not finished. It will take a little time. There's a dream of making this third movie. It would make absolute sense to me. That's Denis Villeneuve stated uh, during a Dune 2 press conference. He has actually written the script for Dune 3. Jesus. He is ready for it. Mm. And if Dune 2 is a success, which we should have seen last year, still pissed off about that. Thank you. Should have watched it in November, December. But they bumped it. We'll watch it in March. We'll review it sometime after that. Um, but he's already ready to make a trilogy of this and then walk away, I would imagine. But the universe is open up now. They're going to do the show still, so mm, uh, nice. we'll see. But, uh, yeah, Denis, Denis on Dune. Okay. And then, uh, finally, we talked about it a little bit, Christopher Nolan on Zack Snyder's impact on the superhero films. This is what he said. There's no superhero science fiction film coming out these days where I don't see some influence of Zach. 
When you watch a Zack Snyder film, you see and feel his love for the potential of cinema, the potential of it to be fantastical, to be heightened in its reality, but to move you and excite you. Mm -hmm. And apparently there is a one hour extended director's cut. Of course there is. Yeah, of course. Coming in 2024, rated R. Oh, of course. and then part two of the story um, releases April 19, 2024, so we don't have to wait long. Obviously, the movie's been out. We've <clears throat> seen it uh, for a few weeks now, but the sequel's in April, and there's a director's cut to the original that's an hour longer. But, uh, yeah, that's the segue to where we're at. Well, before you blow your load on the segue, I got to just comment further on that because he also... <clears throat> excuse me. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but uh, Christopher Nolan also said something about, um, what did he say? It was something about Zack Snyder and Watchmen. Uh, hang on, let me see if I can pull it yeah. up. It's a long interview, um, and I forget even um, what the interview was from. I didn't put that down on my notes, but... ah. Christopher they asked Nolan him and he was says, basically like Dan was doing, stroking his cock. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Nolan uh, calls Zack Snyder's Watchmen a film ahead of its time. It should have been released post Avengers. Uh, oh, yeah. So <laughs> now here's the thing um, Christopher Nolan said Watchmen was ahead of its I've always believed Watchmen was ahead of its time. The idea of a superhero team, which it so brilliantly subverts, wasn't yet a thing in movies. He added, it would be fascinating to see it released post-Avengers. Now, this is what pisses me off about this whole thing. This is a quote from one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, who clearly doesn't know that Watchmen was created in 1986 or whatever the fuck (laughs) by a brilliant writer named Alan Moore. Okay. Alan Moore (laughs) subverted the superhero team genre, not Zack Snyder. Right. Let's give credit to the right people here. I mean, Zack Snyder made a movie heroes and anti heroes and hero teams. And no, no, I mean, that. but yeah, Watchmen, you could argue it's a first, but there's going to be somebody who's read fucking every comic that's going to say, no, nah. there's an unknown comic you haven't read from like 1952. But you're missing what I'm talking about. It actually subverts it. But you're missing yeah. my point. <laughs> Nolan is crediting Zack Snyder with the concept yes. of no. what the Watchmen is. He just made a yeah. movie where he took what was on a page and put it. I bet you Christopher Nolan doesn't even know that Watchmen is a book. And that's why it annoys me when people get hung up on these quotes and shit, because Christopher Nolan is like, he was probably asked, hey, what do you think about Zack Snyder? He was probably like, oh, yeah, um, I think Watchmen was ahead of its time. Like, they're they're in fucking, like, actor fucking entertainment brain. They're just saying what they're not... He's not going to be like, oh, I think his movies are shit. He's not going to roast mm-hmm. them, no. Right. Yeah, but of course not. He Stroke clearly, the ego and make a good sound bite. Yeah. He, he clearly doesn't know that Watchmen is a thing that has existed. So, like, fuck off with that shit. <laughs> Alan Moore made Watchmen. Yeah. That's why it's brilliant, not because of fucking Zack Snyder. Anyhow. Mm, no. Facts. Let's get into today's... Um, Zack Snyder. Hero movies. Uh, let's get into today's Is movie. The first of 2024. Uh, Rubbish Moon. I mean, Rebel Moon. Uh, no. Yeah. This movie has... Okay, a- wait. Before we lob... <laughs> fucking copium, copious amounts of opprobrium of Zack Snyder. Can I'm I just say, I think, Zack Snyder. <laughs> I think this would have been great as a television show that was like... Maybe. We'll never know. 10 or 15 we'll episodes long. Maybe. Who knows? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Let's go. Uh, I'll be open. You know, I, I've, I, I have not been the <laughs> kindest... <laughs> To Zack Snyder here on the show. I don't like, I'll be honest, I do not like his take on Superman, or Batman, or any of these comic book characters. I think the DCEU was terrible um, with a few <laughs> moments sprinkled in here and there that are good. I just don't think he understood those characters, and I've been open and honest about it. I do think 300's great. I think Watchmen's great. I think yeah. uh, Dawn of the Dead is great. 
Um, mm-hmm. But those are all things that he didn't write. He just mm. visually interpreted those things. Um, I don't think he's a good writer at all. Uh, Out of the dead. Is he a good director? Hmm, arguable. <laughs> I don't think he's a good director either, to be honest. I think he's a capable director. I think I think Zack Snyder would be a great like visual effects guy. But beyond that, I don't think like he does these things that like only really like people who know film, myself not included, because I get these things pointed out to me by a fr- friends of mine who like work in film and television and like know how to operate cameras and lenses and like the ins and outs of them. And some of the stuff that this guy does is just like off the charts, like insane. Um, Did you see the Rebel Moon pitch meeting, Dan? No, I didn't. I got to watch it, though. Oh, Probably hilarious. It's good. It is good. But <laughs> anyhow, this movie has everything you could expect from visionary director Zack Snyder. You got the muted no, color palette. You got your slow motion seeds falling out of a fucking bag for no reason. <laughs> everything just <laughs> oddly. Slow gardening. Yeah, everything just like oddly <laughs> blurry and out of focus for some fucking like <laughs> weird artistic reason. Uh did you guys notice how the movie I'll opened give up? Credit though, there's some of that stuff. It looks kind of cool. No, but, but it when, doesn't. When though. you're watching, and no, some of it looks kind of cool. <laughs> but when you're 30 minutes in and you're on the 17th slow mo scene, you're like, it's cr- crazy. Okay, yeah. Are we gonna do this <laughs> the whole fucking time? We're doing this the whole fucking time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm tired of it, dude. He yep. loves yep. the slow. That shit started in 300. And then it goes back to the Nolan it thing. It was great like, in 300, the though. Cinemato- his potential in the cinematography. It's like, yeah, I can see where he thinks there's potential here, but I don't want to see another slow motion scene for another hour. Dude's and a clown. I'm only 15 minutes in. <laughs> Dude's yeah. a clown. He's a straight-up clown. This whole movie's blurry. I feel like I had glaucoma <laughs> watching this. Like, Why? <laughs> And like he did stuff in um in that Vegas zombie movie where like he be yeah. he was use he was doing shots with like specific lenses that you don't do those types of shots with and I know I can't really yeah. fully describe it off the top of my head but there was like scenes where you were seeing like Dave Batista's fucking like fucking pores and like boils on his fucking nose and shit it was so fucking close up <laughs> for no reason like yeah. he's just he's just eh, whatever the fuck honestly let it's me tell artistry you. for the sake of artistry but it's not really artistry because it's not good it's like stupid that's the thing but anyhow uh, we're talking about rebel moon this is not about Z- i mean uh, listen <laughs> I, I don't think he's a good filmmaker. I just don't. I'm sorry. He's got a couple of good movies. Other than that, I don't think he's very good. Uh, but trying to be as like unbiased as possible, this movie was fucking terrible. I even messaged <laughs> you guys. Like I messaged you guys halfway through. Like, mm, damn, this movie's yeah. bad. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect it to be good. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it. You know, the Zack Snyder fan fandom is saying like, oh, this is getting review bombed and this, that, and the other thing. Fucking guys, sure, give it course. up. It's got a 5.6 on IMDb. It's got a 31 on Metacritic. Like, on Rotten Tomatoes. What is it on Rotten Tomatoes? Check uh, it out. Clue. Let's see. It, it, like, Rebel Moon Part 1, Rotten 22%. Tomatoes. 22%. Rotten, 59% audience score. This movie 59 is... 59 is terrible for audience, by the way. Yeah. This movie is not being well-received. It is not a good movie by every I think possible I fucking why? metric. A lot of people hate it because I think it could have been better. No, it's just not then, good. N- well, okay, <laughs> hang on. Okay, so the story is not that bad overall. I, honestly, the delivery of the story through Zack Snyder's eyes is what gives it problems because basically what we have here is we have like, um, let's, we got to recruit some people to go on a mission. Like, Okay, what's we got to we got to watch a two and a half movie, two and a half hour movie about recruiting people? That's, <laughs> that's what, what it was. Do. There was so much that's repetition of traveling around like, recruiting and these said, warriors. Like, I would rather see this as a four hour director's cut or as like ten or fifteen episodes in a show and watch you know forty five to sixty minutes at a time. I don't want to watch a two and a half hour recruiting movie just to wait a fucking half a year or a year to see what these characters do. I don't give a fuck about that. That's stupid. Like that, this feels like a like a Netflix. Like we're gonna do this for money, 
So you need to drag this out, Zach, and we'll do a director's <laughs> cut and it's going to be even better. And people will watch that too. Like, I feel yeah. like there's some like money behind it. That's like pushing because the story isn't terribly bad. Like I'm kind of interested in the, you know, and it draws from a lot of stuff. Sure. Like you get stuff like Magnificent Seven, uh, Star Wars, Dune, Game of Thrones. Uh, fucking, you know, Game of Thrones. There's a lot of stuff that he pulls from. And you're like, okay, well, that's interesting. And this is kind of interesting. And this character seems interesting. But I don't get to learn any of this stuff because we're just recruiting characters in this movie. And that's all I'm going to yep. get to see. And I was like, well, fuck this. You learn just nothing. Just recruiting characters, showing, in, showing in them their fucking boss fights. But I would rather mm-hmm. see more of the actual story than just jumping yeah. from planet to planet. He could have made that a 30 minute montage and we could have watched two hours of something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's keep in mind, this was, he, so according to him, he conceived of this story in 1997, back in college. Uh, And then he originally pitched it to Lucasfilm in 2012 Mm -hmm. when it was purchased by Disney. So his intent for this was to be a Star Wars movie. And Mm -hmm. assuming when he got laughed out of their fucking office, (laughs) uh, he decided to sort of make his other... This is honestly really being serious. The most derivative well, fucking thing I've out. ever seen. No, he for sure got left at. This movie is a joke, dude. There's nothing good about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't, the story is <laughs> not good. It's, it's the most derivative fucking thing I've ever fucking seen. There is not an original thing in this. It's like, I mean, a, it was still Kathleen Kennedy, head of Star Wars back then. You think she laughed Zack Snyder out of the room? I mean, not probably literally, but I think once he left, they were probably all like, did you hear that fucking shit? That no, I think Kathleen <laughs> Kennedy was very interested, but maybe they, well, she sucks they've herself, been losing like, money. They've been losing money and getting their own hate. So they're like, we're not going to take any chances on anything dude, that isn't. Canon. What is original about this though? Forget star Wars. There's nothing original about this as a science fiction movie as anything. It's got star. Well, it, it's movies a fucking, draw from movies all the time though, though. I mean, yeah, but, Magnificent seven is a Western based on a Japanese movie. Of course. But it's not derivative. This is like, if you close your eyes, this is like a fucking Walmart Star Wars. This is a Walmart fucking Dune. This is a Walmart. This is like, he's just pulling. You're saying con- it's a TikTok mashup of every I'm movie saying that he we've took, already ever seen. I'm yeah, exactly. I'm saying he took concepts from everything he's ever watched that he liked, science fiction he based. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. Threw it into this fucking thing, spackled it together with some fucking mud, and called it a day. Okay, I honestly <laughs> couldn't even. I've never zoned out of a movie more than this one. I and I, I've I've mentioned I zoned out a lot. I didn't. I don't. I couldn't even begin to tell you what this story is about, other than the fact that like there's an evil empire thing, and they come to this fucking planet where she's hiding out, and they're gonna come back in ten weeks. So she's got to assemble a team to fucking do this. You don't learn anything about any of the characters really, and anytime nope. you do, it's from these like long winded, verbose scenes of exposition with terrible fucking acting and terrible dialogue mainly from her <laughs> this chick she was fucking terrible in this movie and i've mentioned it many times i have a friend who is an actor and she has told me numerous times when people criticize actors they don't typically understand that this is this is the direction they're getting i don't give a fuck sofia butella everybody in this movie was terrible the dialogue was terrible the acting was terrible all of it it was bad. I don't agree. I think the Admiral, I enjoyed the Admiral. No. I thought he was yeah. a good villain. Ed, yeah, Ed Screen, he's a good villain. Ed Screen did a great job. Yeah, yeah. you, you yep. want to see the better version of him that he's based off of? Go watch <laughs> fucking Inglorious Bastards because he's literally fucking, what's his name from that movie? Uh, That's, I believe it. Yeah. it. It's like everything Everything is identifiable from something better than than it. Uh, That's fair. He he did play a great piece of shit. I somewhat agree with you, Dan, this, but I think I think you're being. I'm uh, not a little I, bit. I'm not I, because of your disdain for Snyder. I'm not. I, I'm telling you right now. I could nitpick. <laughs> I, I mean, I could nitpick some movies that we've reviewed, dude, uh, to this detail to be like, this is from that, and that is from no, this, no, no. and this right. is bullshit, and it's unoriginal. The, well, that happens all the, the time. The second this man stepped off that ship, I was like. Oh, this is Christoph Waltz from fucking Inglorious Bastards. It's the same thing. Uh-huh. It just is. Listen, okay. I understand that the way it looks, that I'm shitting on it because I, I don't like Zack Snyder. There's nothing to do with Zack Snyder. 
I don't like him as a filmmaker. I don't know him as a person. I don't have a problem with him as a person. I just don't. This movie is just bad. I cannot. (laughs) I cannot tell you what this movie was about. Marvin, was this movie bad? I don't think this movie was bad. (laughs) I think it was mid. I think it had potential. I think the movie did a lot of telling, not showing, of course, but it still Mm -hmm. somehow ended being way too long. Dude, like, I, I don't understand it how you can mid, cut out so bad. much and still yeah. end up with a movie this long. There's a fuck like, because that's what he does, dude. It's always but it was yes. like and it was like too long damn, and too but... short at the same time. Like we weren't given enough. Like a, I swear yes. we were missing entire segments. Oh, but don't worry, but if you, bro. If you can't, but if you can't get your point across in two and a half hours, yeah. maybe like Dusty said earlier, make this into Marvin, a show and said man, you and show. I. <laughs> please let me or speak. Or a six-hour director's cut. Do one or the other for a second. Don't show me. This part of a movie. Silence. <laughs> Marvin, you literally are living in my brain because my note right here says, if you can't make a solid story in less than two hours and it's a consistent issue, get a new job. Yeah. That's this dude's MO. Oh, you didn't like fucking Batman v Superman? Don't worry. Oh, the <laughs> There's a four hour fucking extended cut that's better, I promise. Oh, you didn't well, like I'm... Justice League? Well, that's not my movie. Here's my movie that's four hours. And you could also watch it in black and white, <laughs> and it's my cut. Oh, you don't think Rebel Moon's that good? Don't worry. I have a 17 and a half hour fucking <laughs> R rated cut that's much better, I promise you. Dude, get a new job okay, if you wait, can't fucking put together a fucking solid story in two hours or was, less. Was his vision of the, was his cut of the DCU stuff better than what was released by, uh, what's his name? Um, J- Joss Whedon. Oh, Justice League was better. Whedon, yeah. Whedon. Yeah, Justice he, League was he, better, he, but Batman v Superman was not as, the only reason Batman v Superman was slightly better, his cut of it, was because in the editing room, it made sense some because fucking he told a bozo, more longer no, story. No, uh, listen eh, to me. No, no. I, I liked I liked this cut <laughs> because it told a more full story. That's like, fair, we, whatever. Joss, Joss's cut uh, left a bunch of shit out, and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Right. Where the Snyder cut actually, like, you're like, okay, I get what's going on. Sure, it's long as fuck. And this is where, like, I'm torn. Like, I he either needs to make six-hour fucking movies or he needs to make fucking, you know, 15-episode series because making, yeah, trying to tell that story in two and a half hours and spreading it out over two and a half to six years is, f- at that like, that's grating. Like, no, I'd rather needs fucking a drag my balls through cut glass <laughs> than fucking wait for that shit. Like, stop I it. I don't even... I don't think an hour more is enough for this movie. But I don't. <laughs> no, I, I think you guys, are, you guys and me are not really on the same page <laughs> at all. Yeah, we're, you yeah, got, we're you guys apart. Are, you guys are blaming the fact that like this is bad because there were things omitted from it. I'm saying no, it's bad. We're because, saying this story has potential and yeah. it could be good if told properly in a proper time format. Maybe and you're saying no. Zack Snyder just shucks. His story sucks, and this story should never be told. And we're like, no, it's really not that bad. What's the story we then? Properly, you have to explain it to me. What's the story in this? There's an evil empire. Uh, uh, okay, this is like any sci-fi story that <laughs> is ahead. drawn from uh, the main sci-fi story. Uh-huh. Okay, there is a chosen one. This uh, goes all the way back. Pre- this this predates Star Wars. We talked about this before. This I goes know. back to Dune. This is Frank I'm Herbert. not comparing Man it to Star is a genius. Wars. There is a chosen one. Yeah, check. Okay. We got an evil empire, right. check. We got a chosen one. Evil empire and sends We got a chosen one that, vicious that is, fucking has soldier. been put in a position, check. yes, that needs to go and fight and round up a crew to uh-huh. go on a mission to mm-hmm. defeat the evil badass. Yeah. How is that different from any sci-fi movie we've ever fucking watched ever? Fucking <laughs> N- Neo from the Matrix. What the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? The Matrix is one of the most original pieces of fucking... Uh, he, what do you mean? No, he's just a chosen one that's going on to kill the evil badass. That's the same sci-fi story we're talking about here. Of course, that's, but I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that there is like... For, listen, we live in 2024. Like the, yeah. You're bound to fucking take... I'm not talking, I have nothing wrong with taking fucking inspiration from other things at all. Okay. Sure. Okay. But there is not a single original concept in this. There's even a fucking cantina scene, for Christ's sakes. Like, <laughs> that's true. There, yeah, is, there, there is not an original scene because here's you what know, happened. The he most could, egregious, go ahead. Go ahead. Everybody who works in Hollywood is a huge fan of Star Wars in his age group. He made a fucking Star Wars movie that he pitched, got denied. 
and then he couldn't figure out how to fucking rewrite it. That's what happened. There's too much Star Wars in this. Okay, it's a lot. They got the they got the Death Star. Uh, yeah, the Empire. The fucking Darth <laughs> Vader. The fucking Chosen One. The this, the that. The the ragtag yeah, band of fucking yeah. people. Yes, yep. of course, Star Wars also pulls from other things, but this is like, this is just this is a a fucking. Walmart You're version of Star Wars. More uninspired than more uninspired than normal. Yeah, I don't think there's a single original okay, concept that's in fair. this. Okay. And that's but that's just the, that's just scratching the surface of why this <laughs> is bad. <laughs> really, it is. I don't think the dialogue was good in this. I thought the dialogue was fucking terrible. I thought the acting was terrible. Okay. I thought some of it is just downright fucking goofy. Right? <laughs> Yeah. The the no, the some of it like the what was the scene where they went to go get the general uh what was this uh general Titus mm. and when like, I say uh, goofy pretty... I don't mean like in a comedy sense because there's no comedy in this we know Zack Snyder doesn't like joy but I'm talking about <laughs> goofy like when they show the flashbacks and like the king is like fucking giving his fucking speech it's like like what is even going on in this. Um, the most egregious thing for me about this movie, I'm just going to lay it out right now. Well, hang on, because, let me finish. Okay. Because uh, I, I just want to make specific points and then you guys can talk about it, because I honestly don't give a fuck yep. about this movie anymore. <laughs> but, like, you guys are talking about the length of it. I don't have a problem with length. I really don't. Well, what's the worst part for you, then? Well, the worst, the worst part... Of it. The worst There's of it is that uninspired it's and disinteresting it. and unoriginal, and, and then it was delivered poorly. So there's like... And the acting was bad. Yeah, there's just nothing about it, like, that is good. I don't... Th really, I'm being dead serious, and it's not because of Zack Snyder. If I had watched this not knowing he made it, I'd be having the same exact opinion. Like, at one point, when I was watching this, I felt like I was watching this shit forever. I was like, this shit is so fucking long. And I looked at the clock, and I saw I had, like, an hour and 30 minutes left like <sighs> good lord that is not the sign mm -hmm. of a fucking good thing okay yeah and and the cgi in this was fucking terrible this is my final point i thought the cgi was terrible there's one scene and towards the end with like the bigger city planet thing that looked like the cgi looked like it was straight out of like 1998 from phantom menace it was bad <laughs> okay so and then also this has to do with CGI too. Everything felt so fucking small in this movie. I don't know if you guys felt that way too, but the set designs were terrible. Like there's like these sweeping vistas and supposed to be like these planetary things. And you could yep. just, you Fa could Foundation tell. Foundation does a better job. Yeah. You could tell. This is my problem with Ant-Man too. If you guys remember Ant-Man Quantumania, this fucking, you could tell it was like, they're on like a fucking three foot set. And then the green screens behind them. Like, you could tell. And when CGI is done right, as we've talked about, you know it's CGI, but it tricks your brain enough to be like, wow, that looks fuck." Nothing in this movie felt real to me, and it felt very small and crafted. Like, it just didn't sell me the fact that they're on these other planets. So all these things combined, I just, I literally don't think there's a single redeeming factor to this movie. It's, I promise you, not because of Zack Snyder, I'd feel the same way if I didn't know it was him. Um, but listen, how many times are we going to let this dude fucking get away with this shit? You guys got to <laughs> talk about whatever you want. Yeah, keep getting away. <laughs> what was oh, your well, back to what I Yeah, yeah the most Literally. egregious thing, let me let me just go ahead real quick Marvin, I'll let you take it. The most egregious thing for me was uh Charlie Hunnam's character, right? Oh god. You you His pull up and you're terrible. looking for, you're looking for a dude, right? And that dude gets hauled away by some mercs. And you see the mercs paying a guy some money and he's like, "Hey, you guys are outlaws? I can help you out. Get on my ship. And then he betrays them at the end. Like, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> you just saw what he did to a wanted man. And then you follow him around and gather your crew up and you get backstabbed. Like, that one hit me. Like, that's that's a fucking stupid plot point. And I don't know, maybe he's going to be in the second one or not. I don't know. But bad writing. That was, I was like, that was bad, bad writing for me. What do you think, Marvin? Uh, well, he said we have a problem with length. I don't, I don't have a problem with length. I have a problem when the length isn't like conducive to anything. Like right. I watched Oppenheimer, no issue. I watched fucking yep. Fla Killers of the Flower Moon. Even mm -hmm. though that one was a little long, that still flowed way better than this movie. Like, yeah, it just felt like we were jumping from just jumping from 
different different parts with no it was didn't it just didn't flow well to me yeah, yeah like okay we're jumping from planet to planet to pick people up where are we going well at the end of the movie you're not going anywhere because we got betrayed by the asshole in the beginning that was betraying other people that's that's but, my problem with this movie so here's the yeah. thing right if you you obviously accept the fact that this is like a blatant fucking rip off of like yeah, many, I do many, many things. Several stories. It's yes. not just Star Wars. Like the movie opens up like fucking Thor. You literally have the guy who played <laughs> Odin doing the exact same monologue that he does yeah. in fucking Thor. I forgot Thor. about the monologue. I forgot about the monologue. That was crazy. It's yeah. like well, it's like the robot. You you find <laughs> curious, and then they're like, "Yeah, you're not gonna see the robot till the end of the movie. Go fuck yourself." We don't well, know what he's about or what he's doing. Watch the next one, asshole. Well, but that's the thing is like you don't know. So I'm making a point that like clearly. The opening of this movie is very similar to the opening of Thor, so much so that the same guy doing the same narration for the most part is doing it in this. Exactly the same. Okay, I thought that was funny. I also thought the big portal that looks like a fucking vagina was funny as well. It's like literally a vagina. Like, I don't know if nobody else caught that. You but, really need to watch the pitch meeting, dude. But I will. But, but anyhow, like, if you accept the fact that this is like a ripoff of a lot of different things... What did you like about it? Because I'm saying there's nothing original about it, but even if there was, I you don't learn anything. You don't know anything about any of these characters except for her. That she was like, yeah, her fucking homeworld was slaughtered. Which is that, not, I mean, that's what's a Thanos thing. Like, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to take this right. degenerate fucking thing and that's raise it. Saying. And it's going to be my half dog. That's what I'm saying. Was. And that's yeah. not even a Thanos that like that goes, you know, that's a trope that's been also in stories Finn. for like, I think Gladiator. I right. Think, okay. But know, let me finish my but. point. You take everything that's unoriginal. What's the originality to what is in this movie that you think has potential is what I'm curious about. Both of you. I'm genuinely curious because. Does a movie have to be original for you to enjoy it though? I don't think it does. Nope. No, but nope. it has to, what, uh, but, uh, it has to give you something. It doesn't give you anything. You don't learn anything about any character in this movie except some like that's very. That's not true. That's that's why I'm saying it has potential. I, I feel like if those things are fleshed out, what do you learn? She is a fucking person. <laughs> we know about her. Okay, fine. She's the only she, one that has she, exposition. She ran away. Forget about her. And she's, she's the most uh, wanted person in the uh, galaxy. Again, yes, she's the only. We person. can't forget about her because. Yes, she, be, Yes, we can, because she's the only person. You, okay. Let me you finish. You can't say, what do you like about this movie? Forget no, but, about what you like about this movie. But let me finish. <laughs> I'm making a point. You're not allowing me to finish it. She's okay. the only All person right. that has exposition and backstory, but nobody else in the mm. movie has any. That's my thing. And the robot. The, the robot is number two. Uh, sure. He gets more than uh, the other yeah, characters, right. which is hilarious. <laughs> Charlie Hunnam's character, you don't know shit about him. He's a traitor. The fucking general, he just was a general that did some shit. Uh, the fucking spider bitch who was fighting the spider, she just lost her kids. Like, it, you learn, like, the most shallow yes. of things about these people. So it's like... And that's where this yeah. movie fails. Because... I agree. The, 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 it's interesting, like, oh, there's this lady that goes out and hunts spider ladies with Jedi-like swords and <laughs> is saving children. I want to learn more about that. Oh, yeah, well, Zack Snyder sick. says, fuck you, watch the next movie, because all we're doing right now is gathering characters up, and it's going to be in the next three-hour movie. So, yes, <laughs> there are problems with this movie, but that's not to say that there are problems with the characters, because some of these characters are actually kind of fucking interesting. Like, I want to learn more about this fucking spider lady fucking killer and what she's done in her past. And I want to learn a little bit more about the fucking robot. And I want to learn a little bit more. And they, they, they fucking drag you along. And yes, it's fucking irritating to watch a fucking two and a half hour movie of a montage that you could have done in 30 fucking minutes. And you could have gone on with the story. Or you know, But it's not that bad, dude. Nah. It's like this. This is this could be fun if it's mm. told right, but it's not. It's not being told but right. If doesn't count because it wasn't told right, and it won't That's be called potential, right? No, is but that, it, no, right. no, it has potential. Yes, but, it but has what is, potential. Or it had. It had. Thank you. Yes, had Past potential. Tense. The potential is gone because it had potential <laughs> yes, when he fair. sat and wrote that's it. Fair. The fact remains <laughs> is he took the shit that he wrote that was bad and nobody fucking checked him on it and he made it a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not he. Well, Netflix paid Netflix, for the shit too. Netflix paid oh, yeah. him a lot of money because they knew that they would get a lot of subscribers. Of course. And he could tell whatever the fucking story you want because they're like, <laughs> hey, you know what? 
Tell a two and a half star story that leaves people wanting. I will say. And then we'll release the extended hour longer version of it. <laughs> Maybe. Right after we release the second movie and we'll be having even more subscribers. We'll make <laughs> even more money. It's about money for them, which is which is irritating because I get what you're saying. But right. that, that's not to say that Zack Snyder can't necessarily make a good story because this he has he's proven it the me. makings of an interesting story the execution was poor you know why this it has, has the, the makings, makings of, of a an very good story? story the execution is very poor do you know why it has the makings of an interesting story it's because you've seen it before done better <laughs> yes that's, that's fine probably. that's okay i've seen dune but you uh, do know, i need to watch anything else after dune i've read dune i've seen dune but why the fuck do i care about star wars it's the same fucking thing Eh, uh, i don't know I think there's. Why do I, think, I care about any sci-fi movie? I think, I've read and seen Dune. It's the original. Fuck everything else is what you're saying. No, and I, I don't think, agree with that because that's good not what stories I'm can borrow from other good stories. I didn't say they couldn't, but the things that are good are good because they borrow from other stories, but also put their own fucking fingerprint on it. Sure. And this yeah, doesn't. Absolutely. You could fucking. This count. does. It was, this was way. <laughs> this was grittier. Yeah, it yeah. Does this was grittier have its for own sure. Twist on it it. There's some originality color. in this. You could fucking. I, mean, I, you could, I like the way it looks. I don't agree with you there. Yeah, I, I know. Like Your fucking looks. Tarkov yeah. looks like you've got fucking glaucoma. So of course, you like this shit. <laughs> yeah. You don't like yeah, that fucking like color, bro. <laughs> I, I will say, I, I did like what's his name? <laughs> the guy who was fucking the Inglorious Bastards ripoff. Uh, he I, was cool. But but that's only because, he, like, he's a cool actor. He was good in fucking Admiral Deadpool. Admiral Atticus. Too. Yeah. Don't remember mm, that. Yep. Don't remember anybody's name. I don't remember anything that happened in this. He was also fucking an alien or something. Some weird shit was going on there. Yeah, he was doing some weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll but, give you that. I don't really remember anybody's name. Right. So the, I'm, I'm just saying the things that you like about this or the things that you think have potential, you're only thinking that because you've seen it all before done better. And that's not to say you Maybe. can't like something that's been done before. Yeah. You sure as fuck can, but... Something like Star Wars, or or I'm, and again, I'm not trying to compare this to Star Wars. It just happens to be one of the more obvious it's pieces of comparison. inspiration. But like, it draws from it, right? But like, you know, every beat this movie's going to take, even in the sequel or whatever. Like, you just know what's going to happen. Okay, so what I would like from you then is, what do you think's going to happen in the sequel that comes out in April? So if you can predict, I don't know how everything many that happens in the doing. sequel. I will tell you in the two and a half hour sequel that's coming out in April, if you can be like, okay, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be boring and I'm going to fucking hate it. And if you're, if you hit on like even 60%, not even, you know, if you can hit on 60% of the bullshit you think is going to come out of Zack Snyder in the sequel, I'll be like, okay, this is trash. And I agree with you, but I don't think you know where this is going. Do you? I mean, maybe i don't know i'm not saying i'm fucking sitting here like i I just think the movie's gonna have specific beats it's gonna fucking follow that's like it she's sure. obviously gonna face off against her adopted father and like you know yes and and that's not again that's not to say i'm not sitting here saying that it's bad because it's derivative i'm saying that it does nothing unique <laughs> at all that's how bad it is it's so bad that it does nothing unique that's what that's what did a couple things that's that were what's bad about unique. it like i don't know that i've ever watched a movie where there's some fucking spider lady stealing kids and a jedi lady has to kill her because but what? the spider lady's <laughs> mad all right because but, of how society is going all right like there's some interesting webs that are being weaved in there that are like okay that's actually kind of interesting, and I'd like to know more. But Zack Snyder fucking kicks you in the balls because you're and says, viewing no, that as world building, that. and it's not <laughs> world building, is what I'm telling you. It's just fucking hollow, shallow. Just like here, have the scene because I got to fill a time slot. That's all it is. It's nothing more than that. If it was world, there's no world building in this, like nothing whatsoever. It's like there's an empire, and we're on this fucking planet that fucking has fertile land, spice. Jeez, weird. And like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? I told you, dude. Like, shout out Frank Herbert. It, it, it's just the, none of it. There's no world, but there's nothing. The, the, the only good thing about this movie was Anthony Hopkins and he was just being Odin. So like, yeah, I don't know. Tell well, me I'm for wrong. About five minutes and then he disappeared. If they he, even listen, go ahead, Marvin. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> they even drew from Harry Potter with the uh, the guy yes. tam- taming the fucking <laughs> winged beast. <laughs> yep. And like, what was the yeah. point of that scene? I was sitting there. That's when I messaged you guys. This movie. So I told fucking you bad. they're recruiting and they all have their own boss fights. It's kind of like a video game. Like yeah, you like, recruit your guy, you have a boss fight, and you go to the just, next uh, boss fight. They, <laughs> and let me just say one thing. Sorry, but Ray Fisher is a terrible fucking actor. Okay. I don't care what anybody says. I'm sorry that he got picked on or whatever by fucking Joss Whedon, but this dude is not a good actor. Oh, the cyborg guy, right? Yeah. Terrible actor. (laughs) Yeah. Like, go fucking stock groceries or some shit, because this is not for you. (laughs) This career path is not for you, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, like uh, Titus uh, Hunsu, he's a great actor. I love him. Oh, yeah, he's good. Anthony Hopkins, great actor. They're all good actors. Stuart Martin is fucking like like they're all good actors, but that's the thing is like I, I recently saw a fucking thing on TikTok. It was uh who was fucking talking? I can't remember who. Some actor. And he was saying like oh, who the fuck was it? Now I'm gonna it's just gonna drive me fucking crazy. I don't know. It's some actor that like went on to direct some stuff. And he was saying that like the best directors are former actors because directing is no different mm. than acting. It's like the same right. thing. So when an actor is fucking not good, they're a professional <laughs> actor for a reason, okay? All these people in this movie are professional actors for the most part. When they're not good, it's because they're the director is not doing his job good or properly, okay? Again, I don't... Act, like, this has nothing to do... I don't have some fucking weird personal issue with Zack Snyder. I don't know the fucking dude. I'm sure he's a great guy. Well, you he do, doesn't make good that, movies. No, it's not yeah, a personal issue. Okay. Agree no, no, to disagree. I don't know him That's, as a fucking person. How could I have a personal issue with him? Because you hate every movie he's ever made except for one? That's or not two? true. I <laughs> like three of his films. He's not a good filmmaker. Uh, well, if he, okay, that's a if he made a good a movie and I liked it, I would him. say it. Because there are, there I'm not are argue hundreds, of thousands, you, dude. hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that think he's a great filmmaker. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But he's not, and they're wrong. <laughs> so, like, he's just objectively not. That's right. why it has and the that's fucking... that's not a personal thing. That's no. just a, a statement of fact. I don't personally know Christopher Nolan, and I think he's a great filmmaker. What what are you trying to say? Here's an That's example. A personal thing I know too. you personally, Some and something that I Christmas hate Nolan. about you is you will <laughs> fucking argue about semantics about the dumbest shit. But I could have that opinion because I know you personally. I don't know Zack Snyder personally, so I don't judge him as a human being or as a person. I'm judging him as a filmmaker, and he happens to be a bad one, in my opinion. <laughs> it's just my opinion, and that's fine. We all have our opinions. That's yeah. But I'm simply really saying personal opinion. It's personal. I don't know what this movie has going for it if anybody sees stuff in it that they think is good sure see in april i won't see i'm not watching the second one i am we're not going to review we're not going to review the next one we're not going to give it a maybe okay this is total shit and so we will not re we will read when this comes out i think i'm all not even going to talk about it all right marvin we'll talk about it this was a great episode i think we should and maybe I don't Dan know. Dan doesn't have to watch it, but you and I will watch it for sure, Marvin, because it sounds like you and me think <laughs> it's decent and it has potential. And so we can talk about it and Dan can shit on it because he hates Zack Snyder personally. <laughs> I don't I, I, I think I'm all I'm set on kidding, Zack yeah, Snyder. I, I don't there's just like I, like I'm I'm over it. I don't want to see muted color yeah, palettes. No, that's fair. I don't that's want to fair. see slow mo we didn't even talk about the slow motion. Well it's like it's like did. literally a joke. I mean I told you I brought it up it's a, a couple million times. Slow-mo. I hated yeah. it. Like, but it's like, like literally I, a joke. Like it's almost yeah, as if he's like, I know this is a meme, so I'm doing planting it seeds. over and over and over again. It's like he knows it's a meme, yeah. but he doesn't. He thinks it's fucking dope and it's not. That's there a were signature. A couple times that's a signature, right? Yeah, there were a couple times you're like, okay. Where he slowed that down, that shot is kind of cool. But for you to do it every 15 fucking minutes right. is ridiculous. I don't He's want to He's shot watering his own shit down. Somebody planting some goddamn seeds. Like, I yeah. don't need that. Anyhow, yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's a single redeeming quality to this movie. And it's not because of Zack Snyder. It's just not, it's just <laughs> not a good, it's just not a good movie. It's huh? just not. I, I, there's, like, I feel like we're going to be worlds apart on the writing. Maybe. I was unentertained. Ooh, on the shit. writing? On the rating. Oh, the rating. Yeah, probably. This was this was unentertaining <laughs> to me. Give it a zero. 
I, <laughs> like I feel a, our lowest score ever is coming in at a point five. I just, so I, feel like. I just wasn't entertained in any way by it. Like I didn't find that's any fair. of the no, characters you're, interesting. You're, yeah, you're allowed to. Yeah, that's, and that's yes, where I think the crux right. of I think that's where, where our separation is coming. You guys are like, oh, it has potential because of this, this, and this. I and watched I'm like, it twice, and I'm like, yeah. well, what's Damn. the potential when I've seen this stuff just done better before? You know what I mean? No, that's a fair point. I yeah. didn't like the Batman. Yeah. Because I've seen better Batman movies. Like, I, it's the same thing. Like, I don't know how else to explain mm. it. Like, yeah. I don't... I like the Batman. Sure, fine. I didn't hate it as much as this. I thought, you it, was, like, I thought it was quite boring. You like, you, so you think when people remake stuff, it's just completely pointless? For the most time? Most of the time, yeah. But I... Hmm. But uh, but it's not... But again, I'm like I know that's part of, like, a huge part of what I'm saying is, like, the similarities this movie has. That's not why I didn't like it. If it was entirely original, I don't think it was good. Like, just ba- <laughs> like the acting was per- terrible. The writing was terrible. The direction was terrible. Okay? And I just think the story just happens to be uninteresting. And, like, it, it, like I, don't, I, I didn't find any of the characters really interesting. And, like, okay, maybe on the very surface level they're interesting. This guy could fucking talk to bird fucking creatures. Yeah. Wow, cool. Where's that well, going? Well, I mean, that's because that's all, that's all we got. Right. Why? So you, you wouldn't be bad. able to find the characters interesting. Like the excuse of, well, there's a second movie coming and also there's a longer one. That doesn't, like, get it. Like, stop <laughs> it. Make a fucking movie. Make a fucking story that, that stands on its own. If it's good, then you do the sequel. Like, this whole, like, Oh, well, this is going to be a trilogy. They just announced something else. What the fuck was it? Dusty posted. Oh, Danny Boyle and fucking, uh, what's his name, are coming back to do 28 years later. But it's going to be a trilogy. Yes. Why does one movie in a trilogy have to also be a trilogy? That doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> just make a goddamn movie. <laughs> Did you so, like zombie mode in Call of Duty, Dan? No. No? Okay. Well, no. I love zombies. Bad point, then. I was I gonna know. say why? Why not just go play Wolfenstein 3D? Because it's the same fucking thing, and it's the original. Yeah, I know. Again, you're like really like attaching <laughs> yourself to the fact that like my my issue with it is that it's similar. No, 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 that no. is I'm, part no, of it. No, no, I'm I'm just giving you guff because this is a contentious episode, and I think that the, well, because I don't um, understand what you could possibly like about it. The dude is even dressed like the fucking guy from Inglorious Bastards. He literally looks like a Nazi. They're made to be Nazis, space Nazis. Yeah. We yeah. already had mm-hmm. space Nazis. Yeah, st- like- well, that goes back to my point about Call of Duty Nazi mode. Like, that was fucking Wolfenstein 3D. Games have been doing that for fucking decades. So have movies. This is not something new. And uh, it seems like you are um, being a little bit more um, critical because this is Zack Snyder, mm-hmm. where you might give it leeway if it was somebody... Like uh, if like if Christopher Nolan did this movie and it was the same thing, okay. you would be a little more favorable, I feel like, than if no. it was Zack Snyder. That's all I'm saying because I know your disdain for the man, I, and I respect it. And I don't have a disdain for I'm him. I'm not going to deny it. I have a disdain no. for his film as a, as a film director. No, yeah, stop no, saying that. As, I don't know him as a person. Stop it. I don't know him as a person. That's not I what cannot I said, Dan. Yes, you're you putting words in my mouth. Yeah. No, okay. You have disdain for him as a filmmaker. Uh-huh. Would you let me fucking finish? No, you corrected yourself after the fact. Yes. No, I was was. I know you interrupted me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I do not have a disdain for Zack Snyder. You Go have ahead. a disdain for him as a filmmaker. I have a disdain for his films. Correct. Yes, as a filmmaker, you most do not of like his him. films. Not if it was Christopher Nolan's film, you would be a but little more. But this wouldn't lenient. be Christopher Nolan's film. That's such a stupid comparison to say. Okay. He's a skilled filmmaker. He wouldn't do this. This is the writing of a child, just like the Martha right. scene is the writing of a child. This is like mm-hmm. the dialogue in this is like the a kid playing in like a fucking bath with his toys, his figures, and he's like, oh fucking I'm like making up fucking kid bullshit that kids say. <laughs> like I it has nothing to do with Zack Snyder. I could totally understand why your brain might just like be hyper fixated on that, but I promise you it has nothing to do with him. Again, it's, I don't think you hit him personally. I never said whether that. I did or don't, it has nothing to do with him. It's just a not a good movie, in my opinion. That's I just don't like yeah. anything about it. Whether it was written by the Cohen brothers or Zack Snyder or my fucking sister's ass. I do not think it's a good movie. <laughs> I don't think it's a well crafted story. I don't mm-hmm. think the characters are I don't think there's anything about this that makes a good movie or story. Okay. Even. 
Nothing. Okay. I, I've, I, I have zero. I'm not. So Marv and I will review the sequel, <laughs> and Dan will. <laughs> sure. I, I listen don't, to us when we talk about. I it. I don't feel <laughs> compelled to like want to know anything about it. Like, uh, let's think about it in this in this sense. I'm not trying to convince you to think like me. I'm just curious. Our main character. Think here, like a Dan. No, our main character here, Cora. Like, Cora, yeah. <laughs> where's her story going? That like we give a shit about. Just out of curiosity. What did it leave off? The guy fell and he got resurrected. Yeah. And they went back to, well, they got to defend their, their farm. She yeah, ran like, away. <laughs> she ran this. away from, she ran away from tyrants. You say it out loud. It's the, like, oh, all right. Go ahead. She they got to defend their tyrants. land. Hey. <laughs> she ran away tyrants from tyrants. Tyrants found her. Yeah, yeah. And she fought back. Uh -huh. Okay. That's leading to a logical conclusion. We right. all know where that's leading. Yeah. She's going to fight the tyrants <laughs> because she was trained and raised by the tyrants. She's going to have yeah. a crew to help her along the way. This is obviously where this is going. We can see this from right here. I know what's going to happen. I'll tell you right now the plot. will be interesting. Is it? But Is she going to save the, the fight, galaxy? Marvin. The big fight is going to happen in that fucking metaverse that uh, her dad, her her adoptive father is in. Yeah, whatever for sure. the fuck mm -hmm. he's hanging out in some weird shit that wasn't explained. Mm -hmm. Crack the ice, send them back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you guys have any, like? Do you really honestly have any clear idea of what the fuck was going on in this? No, Marvin just said that well, they had to save the farm. That's it. That's all you know. Save about the this. farm. What do you That's mean? That's it. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. What do you mean? I don't know. It's well, just, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like I said, they did they did a lot of telling and not showing. So tell me what the deal was uh, okay, with wait. fucking so okay, hold on. Let's go back to uh -huh. um A New Hope. Yeah. How much did we know about Darth Vader? What do you mean? How much did we know about Darth Vader? Not a lot. You don't but like again, it's not mm, let him cook. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? How much did we learn about Luke Skywalker in that film? We learned he was some fucking dirt farmer on a fucking island <laughs> or some fucking planet with two moons and mm -hmm. like some guys like hey your dad you know he was a chosen one and you might be too look at this fucking sword right here don't open it because it'll fucking put a hole in your head but yeah <laughs> like it's not all that dissimilar like i get I where you know say it's, it's unoriginal <laughs> and i respect that but but the original you're, you're saying, oh, I would, I would fucking hate, I would hate this. If it was anybody. I would. The line is not that far apart. Is all I'm saying. You're just, I think you're hating it because you hate Zack Snyder as a filmmaker, mm. and I think there are some things in this this story that I are interesting that I, people like. Good, good for right? those people. Do you good hear what for, I'm saying? Good, I mean, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I. Okay. I, I don't know how to tell you. You otherwise. can tear any story apart. I could tear. And I, I do tear any story plenty apart. of times. And if then you none want of them are Zack Snyder. A fucking asshole. Well, I'll tell every fucking movie apart from apart from. Well, now you on, do. Like, you say weird shit unoriginal. like, "Well, those hubcaps aren't <laughs> that shiny in real life." So I take t I take yeah, issue or, with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've had those hubcaps back in 1987. I can tell I you drove the that shiny car and was a little There's bit not 37 hubcaps that fly off in that scene like the fucking they do in the bullet. That's how you pick shit apart. I shit on fucking things all the time for very similar reasons. Okay. This has no, I don't I don't know how to convince you that this has nothing to do with Zack Snyder. I don't give a fuck okay. about the man as a person. Okay. I just don't I like his don't. movies. I'm not that passionate about it to where I'm going to fucking sit here and like viscerally fucking shit on him because he he is who he is. Do I think he's a good filmmaker? No. Is he a good writer in my opinion? No. But it has nothing to do with him. You're acting as if I fucking see his name on it and I was never going to like it. I am acting that way a little bit. You're but right. that's not the case. I was open to liking it, just like I like. I admit all the time, I love Watchmen. I love his fucking Dawn of the Dead uh, remake, even though it was written by James Gunn. I love that movie. <laughs> I love Three Hundred. It's just that his other stuff I don't love. I don't see what the big like. I, I'm not no, incapable of liking fair. his movies. No, it's fair that you don't like it. I and I always give him credit. You have every right to not I, like it. Let I'm me just finish. Saying for I always to, give him okay. credit where credit is due. I, there's aspects of Man of Steel that I love. There are the fucking Batman warehouse fight in BVS, I think is to date one of the best live action fucking comic book scenes we've ever gotten. Not just Batman live action. That scene fucking owns. So I have no problem giving this guy credit. 
but I will not give him credit for this movie. I would not give anybody credit <laughs> for this movie because it was a mess and it made no fucking sense. Well, we largely agree on that. This movie was mid. Yeah. But me and Marvin think that it was interesting and it had some potential. You think it's fucking shit. You wouldn't even fucking wipe your ass. With I wouldn't. I think, <laughs> I think it's less than mid because guess what? I think saying it has potential is a lame cop out because that means anything that's not that great has potential. Of course it has potential because if it was better, it would have been better. Fair. Right? Sure. What's that movie we just talked about, Marvin? The fucking bullshit fucking movie where the dude's getting jerked off while he's peeing. What was that called again? <laughs> Infinity uh, Pool. Infinity Pool. Yeah. We oh, all yes. unanimously Jesus thought that movie Christ. was terrible, but guess what? It had potential because, listen, if it was better, yeah. it would have been better. Technically, like, I mean, technically it had potential, but I wasn't interested in that potential like I am yeah. with this movie. Uh, but I'm, I'm just arguing that the th I, think, I think you're looking at this through rose-colored glasses. I not intentionally. I think the things that you think have potential is just because your brain is connecting it to the things that it's clearly inspired by. That's Probably what I. Right. That's, well, I think that's what I. I think. watched. I think I watched a movie that had some problems. What? And had some oh, potential. Yeah, I, I had some problems. And had some potential. Is it the worst movie I've ever seen? No. Is it the best movie I've ever seen? No. Could it be better? Absolutely. Would yeah. I? Do I wish they would have done some things differently? Sure. Am I going to fucking shit on it and say, like, I don't want to watch the next one? No, not necessarily. I'll give it a chance. I really, it's not as, so bad that I won't give the next one a chance. And that's where me and Marvin are. You are, it's so bad I won't give the next one another chance. And that's where that's I mean, where the I'll contentiousness comes from. And that's that, right? I'll, that's, I'll, that's where I'll, we're at, right? I'll obviously watch it for the show if that's what's decided. Hmm. But, I mean, listen. <laughs> Well, no, we're not going to make you watch. I it. do think this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. To be perfectly honest with you, it's up there. Like my my <laughs> my top three wow. worst movies have, are Gran Torino, uh, the 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 yeah. um, what's the movie that Frank that Miller one won some awards, didn't it? Yeah, dog shit movie. Don't understand how. What's the movie that Frank Miller okay. directed? The 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 comic book one, the uh, black and white one. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Jesus Christ, I can't think. The spirit, Holy the spirit, shit. yeah, 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 yeah. The spirit, that's on that list. Oh, I thought you were talking about someone else. No, I'm the spirit, and this is going on there. This is like this is like actual comedy, not intentionally. Um, I thought you were talking about Sin City for a second. I was like, wait, no, he didn't whoa. direct Sin City. That was we, Robert Rodriguez. He wrote Sin City. Yeah, he co-directed Sin City. They say. Well, IMDb. Yeah, he didn't, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't, but yeah, yeah, I just thought we were gonna have a real problem because I thought you were talking about Sin City. No, I like Sin City. Whatever Sin City Two kind of sucks, but yeah. So did the Three Hundred sequel. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oof. <laughs> that was a disgrace. And, and, so and, and just so you know, the I'm Rebel, Rebel Moon, Moon sequel. So might the Rebel Moon sequel. It like, I, suck too. like I'm not alone. No, Who? most of Reddit no, has been shitting. This on movie this movie has terrible fucking reviews. How did this get made? This is probably one of the worst films made in the last 10 years. But the biggest <laughs> question is who decided this was a good idea? And who keeps giving Zack Snyder money to make this crap? <laughs> the dialogue <laughs> yeah. and the cinema photography looks like it came out of a PS4 cutscene. As for the action <laughs> sequences, imagine if a fanboy got a hold of a camcorder and shot a load of Matrix-styled inspired scenes. And for the second <laughs> sequence, it becomes quite annoying. That sounds like and Zack Snyder. Hate. It almost... Well, dude, it does feel like PS4 cutscenes at times. <laughs> like the dialogue is bad. Uh, and sure, sometimes yeah, the CGI when it is freezes terrible. and it's like, oh, let me jump across this branch and stop right when the sun flares on his hand or head. Like, sure. <laughs> but that's like, yeah, well, that's, well, that's what our complaint too. It's overdone. And listen. But there are some redeeming values of this that make it interesting enough that some people want to watch the sequel. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I listen. I hope mm -hmm. you. I I'm glad that you found something to enjoy from it. I personally did not. Uh, there are many people who did not. Yeah. Um. For sure. And I uh I just think it's a soulless it, and boring. It movie. has a lot of room for, um, criticism. And I, I, I value your criticism, and I think you're right in a lot of it, but I don't think you're right in all of it. I think some of it is a little bit overboard, but that's, fair. that's your right. That's that's your. I mean, you're a person. You have that's your opinion. That's fair. It. I appreciate you letting me have my opinion. Let's uh, <laughs> let's give our ratings. It's got a five point six on IMDb. Dusty, what you got? A five point six. Um. 
shit's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a five and a half. Okay, Marvin, that's not good. By the way, oof, that's low. Yeah, I'm. I mean, it's the, it's the definition well, of mid. It's a five, Dan right won't there. Won't watch anything below a six on IMDb. But I want, I'm curious. Generally, no. I, I this how is, low do you go? This is like a one for Good me. Man. This is one. Of, <laughs> really, one. no. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I'm being dead serious. I thought it was fucking terrible. <laughs> oh fuck. Here's a great review. No, no, two great. out of ten. What was going on here? If you're going to make a movie with multiple parts, that doesn't mean you could let your first part be ridiculously bad just because it's setting up for the next parts. This movie is over two hours yeah, long, but literally nothing point. happens until the last hour or last half hour. Yep. And even at this, and even at that, it's a pretty subpar battle scene where someone betrays the team. Oh, no. Who could have guessed? And some irrelevant character no one cares about because this movie spends the entire time setting up for another movie sacrifices themselves. Like, this movie spends so much time oh, trying yeah. to be a big cinema hit, which it definitely had its elements, too, that it just kind of forgot how to be a movie. It annoyed me so yes. much. I seen bad reviews for this movie and really wanted to enjoy it because it seemed like a decent sci-fi, but it was actually impossible to. This sums up everything I feel. Like, <laughs> well, that's Relatively, what I said too, but I wasn't as harsh. But you, but you should be harsh because this should not be acceptable. This is not a movie. This is just like, <laughs> watch this. There's nothing. There's no anything. The fucking character. What's well, his name's character? Okay, but hang but, on. But wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Wait. Okay. Fucking. Ray Fisher's character literally sacrifices himself in a moment where you're supposed to like feel for the guy and his fucking little posse bitch is like, no, what <laughs> feeling is that? You don't know shit about the guy. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> you just know he's like so, a, a rebel. Mm -hmm. like, oh. <laughs> Zack Snyder was paid uh, to make a movie based yeah. on a story that he had. And he's making that movie and that story. And apparently that story is an hour long than what was released. Do you think what was released was 100% what Zack Snyder wanted to release to us. Or do you think Netflix said, Hey, let's release a two and a half hour version one out the gate. And then we'll release an hour longer one of what you really wanted to release later. I don't know. Either way. You're telling bad. me that's Zack Snyder. That's all Zack Snyder's fault. He's a terrible filmmaker that has nothing to do about money. That I has think... nothing to do about corporate greed. That has nothing to do about anything else. But Zack Snyder is a fucking terrible filmmaker and shouldn't make this film. Is that what you're telling me? I think what Zack Snyder presented to Netflix. You're, you're sure right about the corporate greed because Netflix mostly makes shit. But okay. <laughs> all right. what I think likely happened is Zack Snyder pitched this movie to Netflix. And they said to him, we can't be putting out a fucking three and a half, four hour fucking movie. Okay. Yeah. As most studios would. This guy, if, again, as I said in the beginning of the conversation, and Marvin said it too. If you can't make, if you can't tell your story in two hours or less, there's a fucking problem. Some movies deserve longer things. Like fucking well, Oppenheimer but, like I, or like Endgame, where there's a lot of fucking stuff to fit into that story, but there's nothing here. This is episode here. five of a twelve episode <laughs> season. If you let him do it in a show instead of make him do it in movies, but it's not a show; it's a movie. Thus, we have to judge it on that thing. It's a problem. Would yeah, it be a good a show? That's why. I yeah, gave it a probably rating. because we would know shit about the characters. That's but that's a ridiculous argument. <laughs> that's, that's Everything agreed though. That's not all on Zack Snyder. I didn't say. God, part a, a large majority of it is on him though, because he still was sure incapable of taking whatever his vision was for it and condensing it into the amount of time they wanted yeah. him to do it in. Same I'm with Batman v Superman. I know you're not, here. but the same with Batman v Superman. It's not the audience's fault or the studio's fault that this fucking guy made a four-hour movie and then had to fucking <laughs> botch it down to two hours, where you cut stuff <laughs> yeah. that makes no sense. Batman v Superman, the theatrical release, there's scenes that make no fucking sense until you watch the cut of the, his direct director's cut where you're like, oh, fuck, a whole goddamn scene came before this that actually makes fucking sense now. That is not... That is not fucking okay. It's not good. <laughs> right. It's not okay, but that's so, not all so, on so the either, filmmaker. This guy needs a fucking babysitter. Get this guy a handler. Get him out of the fucking editing uh, room. Mm -hmm. Get him that's a fair. fucking get him a, a a a writing coach or somebody to fucking like rewrite his shit. Like something's got to happen. 
I don't know. Because <laughs> it's just not yeah. acceptable that, 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 like, you can't tell a story in, in two and a half hours, you learn nothing about anybody or anything. You just, like, very little bullshit. Like, yeah, it's you, bad you people. You learn very and, little. Yeah. And it's like, it's just, it's that's, bad. just that's just not acceptable. So, yes, I give this a one. This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And it's not because it's Zack Snyder. It's because it's just bad. And that's that. Well, we got three months till the next one comes nice. out. Yay. This might be our least rated movie. Uh, we've Probably. No, I think. No, I don't know. I don't remember what we rated fucking Infinity Pool, but I know we all hated that shit. Oh, yeah. That was pretty bad. Oh, too, yeah. yeah, that's right. There was yeah, another movie I that I think that I raged about and I gave it a zero. What was it? Was but it Scream? I think you're one. I think. No, I think you're one. No, and Marvin and I didn't even rate rated. Scream. Yeah, Scream was unrateable. Because so. <laughs> this shit was just so bad. <laughs> This is worse than Scream, though. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It just Maybe. is. Mm. I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Scream was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Like, Final I, thoughts? I'm it's sitting- been a while since we recorded. This is our most contentious, I think. I don't think so. Conversation, and I'm glad. Really? Yeah. I don't know if we've been this... Uh, I don't know if we've been this uh, fiery in a conversation, but I'm not mad or anything. I just don't like the. They don't fact make some good clips. I, I'm, nobody's mad. You know, we do this. This is why we do this. You're libeling me by saying that. Oh, <laughs> you're insinuating that I don't like it because of who directed it, but that's not the case. You, your opinion is that I was not going to like it no matter what because it's Zack no, Snyder, I, but that's I, not the case. I'm, in, I'm not implying and inferring anything. I'm saying you clearly, statedly have somewhat of a bias against the director. Certainly you said he has a couple good movies, but everything else he did is trash and he needs a fucking hand holder and a babysitter. So yes, the bias exists. The bias, the bias certainly exists, exists not, but that's I'm only not, because I'm not of his past movies. I, I, and I, I, I don't, I don't discount your bias. There's it's warranted. I agree that some of it is warranted. I just don't think, I think you go a little bit further than I do as far as like hating on it. Is all. Hey, maybe you're a little more forgiving than I am. I am. Yeah. I am. I love uh, you, Dan. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm trying to find a review of somebody who liked it because I feel like we should get like the other oh, half of the thing. Like, yeah, keep that's th- going to prove his point. No, no. But keep this in mind. We didn't even <laughs> talk about the story or the character. We normally do in a conversation. No, we didn't. Yeah. No, we. But I, there's I, nothing I, to like, talk I about. Said, I don't remember any of the characters' names, really. Korra is the main character, and I think Hunnam's character is named Kai. I only know that because I looked at it earlier. Not the fucking... But other than that, then Titus, like... But Titus's character, I was like, what are we doing? We're going to half-wash this guy, and then we're going to, like... he's We're going to give him, like, a 30-second monologue, and then he's going to join our thing. He's been out here, like, <laughs> refusing to do anything because all these guys died, and we're going to show up, and 30 seconds later, he's going to join us, like... There is some dumb shit in this movie, and I agree with you. Some of the criticisms you fucking volley at it are very valid, but I'm not shading it on the way you are because I think there are some... Um, what's the adjective? I, uh, there are some things that uh, make it uh, redeemable a little bit. There's some redeemable value in some of these characters. They're not all shit. No, I don't agree with that. Fair. I don't know. I wanted to like it. I like sci-fi. Yeah, I do too. But I wanted to like it more, and I was disappointed. Yeah. But yep, unfortunate. I guess we'll wait a couple it months and see how it goes. Uh, but that's <laughs> gonna do it for us, folks. That's our thoughts on Rebel. He's gonna Moon. he's gonna dump some gasoline on it and light it again. <laughs> that's Rebel Moon Part One. A child of fire. What does that mean? Marvin had made the joke. What, what, what? Dumpster fire. Oh, we never figured that out. Yeah. What is it? Part one, dumpster fire. That's what it should be called. Dumpster fire. <laughs> That's going to be the title of the video. Well, it's just the first title. Fire. We hit it. It's yeah. the phrase of what, though? Why is she a child of fire? Who's the child of fire? Is it even her? I don't know. Is it the kid? I thought it might have been the princess who could, like, heal the dead. Who the fuck knows what that's all about? Let. This What's is, the movie where they're like, this is the spark that ignites the resistance? Is that Star Wars? Yeah, Rogue One. Is that the new Star Wars? Yeah, that's yeah, that's that was Rogue well, One. Well, it's been done, it's done, it's been done in every sci-fi movie. 
like the spark that lights the resistance. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, anyhow, the dumpster fire. Leave a comment down below, folks. Let us know what you thought of Rebel Moon Part One, Dumpster Fire. Uh, be curious to hear your takes. Um, I think some people in the Twitter universe are getting a little bit caught up on this. Like Dusty thinks that I don't like this specifically because it's Zack Snyder. Not the case. Really trying to be objective, and we hope you're objective too. Let us know if you liked it or not. If you did like it, I'd be curious to know, truly, honestly, what did you like about it? So leave a comment. Um, consider subscribing if you have not done so already. We do these episodes once a week. Uh, we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming going forward, barring some sort of catastrophe. Um, do we know what we're doing next week? We don't yet. We got to talk about it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, leave a like on the video. If you liked it, do all the shit, and uh, we'll catch you next week, folks. Thanks for watching. See ya. Hasta.